if we stand, uh, do roll call first. <sighs> Council Member Schroeder? Here. Council Member Breikers? Here. Council Member Jablonski? Here. Vice Mayor Fiskelli? Here. Mayor McKay? Here. If we could please stand for the pledge again. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mm -hmm. All right, Andy. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. As you know, tonight is our first public budget hearing. It'll be done in four different parts. We will. Better? The better? <laughs> okay. Should be. We'll, we'll address the fire assessment and the solid waste assessment. Those will be done tonight once, once you uh, set the final rates on those. Then we will have the first reading and first hearing on the millage and the budget. So Marty's got a PowerPoint that he will run through. Uh, we'll stop appropriately at each section and, and allow for the appropriate debate. Uh, but before I turn it over to Marty, uh, just some things I wanted to say, Mayor. Go right ahead. During the budget workshop, I shared some thoughts with you all on this year's budget process. So I'd like to add some additional thoughts tonight before I turn it over to Marty. As previously mentioned, this year's budget process has been our toughest so far. And it's caused me to think long and hard about how people see the process in much greater detail. The public perception, and this is often fueled by the media, and some people might say fake news, is that staff works behind the scenes to raise taxes, spends excessively, and that residents and elected officials must rise up and fight back. And I think that's wrong. I think it furthers a lack of understanding and creates a situation where we're pitted against each other, potentially in an adversarial situation. The reality is completely the opposite. Public budgeting is a very transparent, open, and collaborative process in which we all work together to be successful. Input for the budget was gathered from the council, from the advisory boards, and residents. No one's here to be an, an empire builder. So recommending an increase in millage is never an easy thing to do. It's actually a very difficult decision for us to come to. I can tell you that it would be far easier to build around last year's millage rate and budget. We could hold a 10-minute hearing tonight, pat ourselves on the back, and say, great job. That's not what you pay Marty and I to do. Our job is to make the hard recommendations. Our job is to do our fiduciary best to protect the town, not only for this year, but into the future. And anything else would be irresponsible. The job of the council is then to get input from the public, to evaluate our work and our recommendations, and determine what level of funding can be provided to best meet the expectations and needs of the community for the coming year. Under no circumstances should the residents, the council, and the staff be adversarial. We all want the best for Southwest ranches, and we need to work together to get there. Saying cut the budget or live within your means is very easy. Making the cuts that impact residents is not so easy. The vast majority of the spending outlined tonight is not discretionary. There are many contractual requirements, public safety concerns, unfunded mandates, and crucial infrastructure needs that drive our spending. Within that much, much smaller discretionary portion, each single item is near and dear to some or all residents. But I will tell you before we kick it off, Mayor, the, the staff is certainly prepared to work with council to achieve a millage rate and a budget that helps us all achieve our goals of serving the residents of the community. And thank you, Mayor, and I appreciate you indulging me. And at that point, I'd like to turn it over to Marty. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Marty. Marty, you're up. There you go, you're on. Thank you, Town Administrator Burns. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members, and welcome, General Public. Uh, tonight, as Town Administrator Burns indicated, is our first public hearing for our tentative budget, as well as our final hearing for the fire assessment and solid waste assessment. Before I get started, Everyone is welcome. I have extra copies of the PowerPoint uh, for you. Uh, welcome to take them with you back home, back home to the residents. Well, we particularly encourage all the residents and make a big effort to get a turnout for our budget hearing uh, every year. Uh, so it's great to see you all here. Uh, the, the PowerPoint itself will be on the website tomorrow. Uh, the budget book. We have also the copies of our proposed budget book available at the front desk. We have uh, versions here tonight if you'd like to 
review that as well. And uh, as was mentioned, we're going to take it uh, step by step, um, piece by piece, and we'll cover each stop and we'll be opening it for public comment. The next slide is our town council um, members, our town administration, uh, who's all here in attendance tonight, as well as several of our staff uh, that uh, are available to ask, answer any questions uh, for anyone. Our summary of our fiscal year 2018 revised proposed rates and fees compared to our adopted fiscal year 2017 and 18. Now, the heading you'll see, it says revised proposed because during our budget workshop in August, we received input from the public, we received input from the council. Uh, we've had uh, revisions uh, downward. Uh, so uh, we've provided comparison of the uh, changes as well in the PowerPoint uh, for your reference. The adopted fire assessment uh, is proposing a $25.16 increase, which is 4.9% uh, per residential dwelling unit from fiscal year 2018. Our solid waste uh, overall, it's a $159.34 or greater. Overall average of approximately 37% increase throughout all residential lot sizes. Our operating millage, as proposed is 4.6167 mills. Uh, that reflects our reduction uh, for the changes. Uh, Tisdor millage, that stays the same. No change in our Tisdor proposed at a 0.3342, uh, resulting in our total revised proposed millage at 4.9509. Uh, which is a reduction from our original proposed of 4.9890. Moving directly into one of our components, the fire assessment, as an introduction. Uh, the fire assessment uses a three-step methodology, and this is unchanged. And uh, uh, it was due to our 2012 consultant study. Uh, we're going to provide proposed and actual rates, uh, the history, five-year history by category, and then we will pro provide you all with a municipal rate comparison. The background entails that the assessment is permitted per Florida statute chapters 166.021 and 166.041 and is adopted by Town Ordinance 2001-09. The ordinance back in, in 01 requires that the annual rate be established each fiscal year. Our first slide, which presents a five-year history, uh, shows you the slight bump up from our residential in brown, going up from the 518 to 543. Uh, the next line on the same slide is our vacant agricultural component from $92.16 to $96. Our second slide gives the five-year comparison of our industrial warehouse, our commercial, and institutional. Going into the reason for the increase is that a number of our municipalities subsidize fire protection assessment costs with property tax. That's general fund revenue. Actually, several do not even assess a separate fire protection assessment, and therefore 100% of their public safety fire is funded from their general fund. The Southwest Ranch policy does not subsidize any fire protection costs from its general fund. The comparison we're going to provide you is that the numbers that have been provided to the Broward County property appraiser and also provided here for service cost comparisons are not truly reflective of 100% full cost recovery for fire protection. For example, you will see where a sunrise sits um, as, as less than us. Uh, sunrise 
City of Sunrise indicated that their proposed fire assessment represents only 70% of full cost recovery. Therefore, municipalities with an unchanged assessment are likely subsidizing their fire protections and operations in the case of a shortfall or utilizing fund balance, which is reserves, to fund their fire capital projects. Southwest Ranches propose a revised increase of less than 5% to $543.65, and uh, the original proposed was $561.95, uh, which ultimately resulted in an $18.30 savings. The next screen is our municipal comparison. You'll see the, the ranking between 1 and 26. Uh, some, as I mentioned, assess and are funded through their general fund. Um, the actual percentage is the 4.85%. And what you will uh, be able to highlight and see from the far column in white are nine municipalities are actually proposing rate increases in excess of 4.85%. That would be Lauderhill, Miramar, Hollywood, Hallandale Beach, Parkland, Pompano Beach, uh, you could see that's uh, 28, 26%, um, Coral Springs, Davie, and Lighthouse Point. So at this time, I'd like to turn it back to the mayor uh, for public comment, questions, comments, direction, and voting from the town council. Thank you. If we can get a motion and a second, and then we'll. Mayor, I think Russell needs to read it into the record first, but yeah. OK. <clears throat> OK, this is a resolution of the town council of the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving the final fire services assessment relating to the provision of fire protection services, facilities, and programs in the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida for fiscal year 2018-2019, commencing October 1, 2018. Providing purpose and definitions, providing for the imposition and computation of fire protection assessments, incorporating the fire protection assessment report, providing for legislative determination of special benefit and fair apportionment, establishing the rate of assessment, directing the preparation of a final assessment role, providing for an exemption for veterans service connected total and permanent disability, authorizing a public hearing and directing the provision of notice thereof, and providing an effective date. We get a motion and a second. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Public comment on this matter? Come right up. Good evening. State your name and address if you yes. would. My name is Dr. Manuel Irubar, 5551 Hancock Road. And also, um, I have another property, which is the one in question here. Um, we just received our um, fire assessment. Last year was high at $2,575. Uh, but this year, they propose to go up to $13,000. $459 and 61 cents. That's a 523% increase, which seems ridiculous. So I would like to know what, based on what, are, you, are they assessing 523% increase on something that was already high? Because my other property is the same size. It's got five times less of an assessment of uh, 500 and something dollars. This is 2,500 and something. There has been no new structure. There has been nothing. Fire rescue hasn't been called in 30 years. So, you know, we have property here since uh, 1994, before it was a town. I would so, tell you something's odd with that. And you I have probably no, see Marty, uh, not right now, but, you know, tomorrow or something. Anytime. $11,000 is a lot of money, you know. It's, it's almost twice as much as last year's whole property tax. Yeah. Thank you. John Eastman, 188th Avenue. Uh, no one wants to pay for the fire department, but you know everybody should know we have the best fire protection in the county. We got three stations and six apparatus, fully crewed, with mutual aid. And I'm sure very few people in this room know that we're paying for two fire departments, and that this council has spent two million dollars on that extra fire department that is not even certified by Broward County. So there's a huge waste of money there. 
And these mill rates and these charges have gone up the last three years and years before that in excess of in, uh, normal inflation. So um, if this is just the first reading, I think you need to sharpen your pencils. And um, when you do the second reading, see where else you can trim out of this. And I would recommend not spending any more capital improvements for the Southwest Ranches Fire Department for the next fiscal year. And let's try to see if we can trim that budget back. Another thing is we put these new modular units at 172nd. You spent a quarter million dollars on four trailers. But this year in the budget, there's $155,000 of enhancements to them. You know, were any of you aware of the enhancements when you approved the, the original four trailers? I mean, this is outrageous. Those, those are not even occupied in a storm. They have to evacuate them. You know, they're good for now. And uh, eventually, I'd like to see a hardened build, excuse me, a hardened building put out that I asked you for years ago. We could have taken this, this money that you're spending and halfway paid for a real fire station with a police station with extra space uh, for the whole town forever. But, you know, we put this huge investment in these modular buildings. But uh, see what you can do with the assessment. I mean, every little bit helps. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I'm Lori Parrish. I live at 12801 Larray Road. If I may, Hi, former Dr. Commissioner, Ford Barnett County Property Appraiser. Pleasure to have you, Lori. And an auditor. And an auditor. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, the reason I'm here, first of all, I appreciate, uh, Mark, your remarks. But in all fairness, um, most of the cities, the way the fire fee and some of the special assessments went on, is assessments and was because in many communities that have lots of condos, lots of senior citizens who are exempt and don't pay for taxes, it was felt by fire departments because, you know, that other residents were covering buying fire trucks that served eight-story buildings or in Fort Lauderdale even higher. So the whole logic when that was first done and debated and sued and it all came out is that everybody would pay something. So the fact that Southwest Ranches pays all its fees, in fact, is very unusual. But I love our fire department. I like our volunteer fire department. They came to my house in Davie, and I always made a contribution long before I moved here. So I'm a big fan of them. And also, Mark, in your comparison rates, you managed to compare what you lowered your fee to. However, you failed to, in your comparison analysis, put down what all the other cities lowered theirs to. So you have what they advertised and what your com mayor and commission lowered it to. And in all fairness, if I were doing it, I'd match apples to apples. The other thing, um, I want to take a look at the budget. Bob was gracious enough to let me flip through his, but I'd like to borrow one and really look at it. Um, some of the things that I don't understand is when I look through the revenue, I can't find your gas tax revenue. And I know that the county commission has always given the cities more than they had to by law. I think they give you 37.5%. But is that somewhere? I don't find it. It's actually it's Road and the Bridge Fund. Marty, I'm sure I can tell you where it is. Did you give her another minute? OK. Anyway, um, I'll study it real hard and look at it. But the thing I'm going to complain about is my taxes this year. And I'm retired, and Jeff retires on December 31st. So uh, I've been wanting to uh, talk to Keith and talk to you about the Supreme Court ruling and political signs in my front yard. But when I get, instead of being married to a judge, when I'm married to a retired judge, I can do that more formally. Um, but our tax increase this year oh. total was um, $724.94. And now I'm retired. Um, your proposed rate increase is 11.79% in just your ad valorem taxes which is the third highest proposed increase in Broward County. The only two communities that are higher than that is Hallandale has something outrageous of 25 or 29 and Oakland Park. That's the highest. I don't think anybody here got 11.79% increase in revenue in your household income. And actually, if you do the rollback rate, which you know it's going to take more than a uh, just in simple majority to pass it because of the Florida law, your rollback rate increase exceeds 15%. Now then, I know most of you, I've supported most of you, 
In fact, I think I supported all of you. Um, but uh, I've known Freddie the longest. But anyway, um, what I'm saying is, what if your household expenses increase that much? I mean, I think that if you were to look through here, um, like I had a much higher budget than the town does and much more employees as the property appraiser and certainly as a county commissioner and school board member. But I never paid $48,000 for a lobbyist, never. And I didn't let my attorney control the lobbyist either. I, whether I was a school board member or a county commissioner or a property appraiser, the lobbyists always worked for me and delivered my message so there was no administrative cost or overhead or anything like that. And I like Keith, but I'm curious when I looked at his legal fees, how much did you spend in legal fees for him to recover? $5,000, because I don't know who handles your insurance in town. Who handles that? Oh, the League, League of Cities. Cities. Well, I mean, I would assume that's a letter and a simple issue to enforce that, those kinds of things. But so I'm concerned about the ad valorem taxes. You gotta I am, wrap it up there, okay. sorry. I am ticked off about bulk pickup. First of all, bulk pickup sucks. It was, didn't used to be so bad. We never, and I mean, I've called Doug, they t used to be when the guy who picked it up, because we have predominantly palm fronds. Anyway, you couldn't even tell the, whatever that scooper thing he uses, you couldn't even tell they've disturbed your grass. This company, we're chopping it up and putting it in garbage cans because we can't stand to put much bulk pickup out because we've had two loads of topsoil delivered, had um, two loads of sod. Anyway, but the bottom Separated. line, listen, this is my money, Doug, and I'm ticked it. off. I get it. And you when I a, get ticked off, I usually have run another the opportunity office. to get up and speak. What I'm saying is, issues. I don't know who negotiated your bulk pickup contract, but anybody that would negotiate and allow a, is it 38 percent? What is it? I wrote it down here. 38 percent rounded off, 38 percent increase in bulk pickup cost. I certainly wouldn't let that person negotiate anything for me. Thank you. Noel Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Many of the concerns that Lori uh, expressed, I agree with. But right now we're talking about the fire. And right. my main concern is the 100. $25,000 or whatever it is, additional add-ons to the modular trailers. It seems that the first 250 for four was a little high, I thought. But when you add another 125 to it, it becomes ridiculously expensive. And I'd like to know why these are upgrades are necessary or are these the gold-plated doorknobs that Broward County used to install in there when we had the trailers with them? And they took them with them when they left. So what I'm saying is that I think this $125,000 is something that really needs to be looked at. And if it's necessary, then it should have been in the first time around, not split where it's sneaked in on this budget here so if it's got to be then we were stupid last year so take a look at it and see if it's whether it's yeah we'd like to have it or my god we've got to have it thank you so, so anybody can come up okay I get it done. Good evening, Barry Nunzig, 163rd and Sterling Road. As you know, I was a fireman for 20 years. You guys need to look at your fire departments and actually evaluate them. Fire department is supposed to be able to give you good service. It's supposed to give you a service when you call them. I know, Steve, you're all about the fire rescue and especially rescue. And yeah, rescue is important. But the problem is you're supporting a volunteer fire department that can't do much for you on rescue. They're not ALS certified. Okay, so they don't carry any drugs. Okay, so when you have that heart attack, they can look at you, and they can look at you, and they can look at you. 
Okay. They're just not certified. The, the, the department's not certified by the state for them to do any of that work unless Davey is there and allows them to do that in a training session. It's illegal for them to do. Okay, so I'm sorry, but it's a waste of money. You guys are about $3 million into the volunteer fire department. That's my guess right about now is real close to $3 million. It's just wrong. That's $3 million you could have used to build a real station, brick and mortar station that we talked about at least two years ago. And when I recommended, John Eastman recommended, the, the fire board recommended, you guys talked about it. You wanted it out somewhere around 190th. But you guys say, oh, no, we don't have the money. That's a joke. And the reason it's a joke is because you sat here and you cried, we can't find the money, we can't find the money, we can't find the money. But in what, four weeks, you found, what was it, $8 million to buy the old jail property? How'd that work? How come you could find the money to do that to spite Pembroke Pines, but you couldn't find the money to build a fire station to give the citizens here the proper service that you thought that they should have. Have a nice night. Uh, my name is Ed Flores, and I own five properties in Southwest Ranches. I'm from Avajo States. I lived there for the last 10 years. Um, I'm here to support the fire department. They do a great job here. Uh, they go to the west most of the time, so over there when Davey uh, they get there before David. I can assure you of that. Uh, they're saying that they're not really certified. They are state certified for your information. And they also have ACL there, which I'm pretty sure most of you guys know. Uh, there's nobody, probably a few people only, that will pay more taxes than me in Southwest Ranches because I own five properties here, the mayor knows. All right? Between my family and me, we've been here for years and years. And uh, there's five properties here in our name, basically in my name since my dad died. Um, I do have a problem with people uh, talking bad about the fire department when they're always there to help everybody here, including everybody on the board. They do a great job, and whoever's saying uh, that the fire department's not doing a great job, uh, they actually don't deserve to speak here because uh, they're really wrong about everything they're saying. They're saying things that are not really true. Um, uh, the ACL, we have ACL on the fire department. Uh, they stay certified, so I don't know where they're getting their information from. Uh, if somebody can come here and give us that information uh, that they're not certified, uh, maybe the chief can get over here and tell us if he's really certified or not. But according to my information, they are certified. Uh, so I just want to support the fire department 100%. I'm a retired firefighter of 33 years, also in the Army Reserve for 29 years. And I think that I have the right to speak here. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Pull the mic down so you can yeah. Yeah, because I'm a little short. Okay, let's talk about the fire department. Name Number and one. address. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. All right. We Name call and them. address. Oh, <laughs> Tracy Swate, 5110 Southwest 201 Terrace, and also 166 Avenue in Green Meadows, and had about five houses also growing up out here. Anyways, I want to ask you about the fire department and some things that maybe we could do a little different. Um, the, vol the volunteers is what we call them, but they're not really volunteers. They are paid. I would love to be a volunteer paid person on this town, but they're really a reduction paid person. Are they certified or are they not to accommodate other municipalities when called upon? I don't think we are. And also, I heard things about also that we should buy trucks that does sky rises when we only have probably two-story homes at the most out here so that could be a waste of money if we're buying trucks or spending money in areas we don't need to be now whether they're doing a good job or not doing a good job i'm sure they probably do a good job i'm sure they're probably very certified but is it required i want to know the cost difference between if we went and, and did a contract with another municipality's fire department versus our volunteers that are actually paid 
I would like to know that actual cost difference if the town can tell us. Is it worth it? Or are we going to be covered? The other thing is we have a lot of land sitting by, and this would probably take Keith to help us out, is we have a lot of land sitting by the women's old prison between the dump site. Could we use that for a bulk vegetation pickup and use it to make mulch, topsoil? Because, you know, a shipping machine is very cheap. $750. We picked them up for the Indian reservation. And we did it for them. And would it be more cost effective to use that land? I would take a poll. I already took one poll. I'll take another one if you would like from Pembroke Pines residents nearby. They agreed to it so far. As long as it's vegetation. That may help reduce the cost of bulk pickup if we can put that out there. We're only talking about fire right now. Oh, We'll Sorry, come back to that. Went, off, went off course. Sorry, folks. But anyways, the fire department, what is our cost difference? Is it effective? I'm not here to make sure someone keeps their license so that they can keep their jobs in the future. That's not what this town's about. It's not to give other people employment. And it sounds sad, but nobody cares about my employment. And nobody cares about my paying the taxes. Nobody cares. So... You want to help other people keep their license because you feel guilty? Why? You didn't promise them anything. I didn't promise them anything. And the people of this town didn't promise them anything. And I'm not here to support that. I'm here to say what it will they do and benefit for the town. And is it cost worthy for our town? Thank you. Hi. I'm raise, the, raise the mic for yourself. Hi, I'm Gary Kane. I live on 186th. I don't know about the fire department. All I know is I lost my wife three years ago in the canal here. And I was told that Southwest Ranchers needed the Davy to help her. So I don't know if they're certified, but I just don't know. But if it takes Davy to save my wife, I hope that none of you guys are sitting there waiting and need Southwest Ranchers to help them and get Davy. Because I already lost my wife. And if they can't help, what good are they? Any other public comment? Okay, Bob. Bob Hartman, 5441 Southwest 198 Terrace. I thought fake news only came out of Russia. I'm hearing facts. People are calling facts. It's all opinion. If people have questions about the certification of our fire department and their capabilities and their skill sets, talk to Chief Bennett. He can tell you. Now, he's always regularly by the fake news folks accused of lying. I go to the fire board meetings, they're all professional firemen, most of them are chiefs, and they all have the highest respect for our chief. So I'm not sure where all this comes from. But let me put something on the table. We're only going up 25 bucks, I'm glad you knocked it down from where it was, okay? That's a good thing. I go twice that, I go four times that, because this is what the fire department means to me. The volunteers, I'm not talking about Davey. Davey does a good job, no, no question there. The volunteers are cost effective. For us to add a Davey fireman around the clock, I believe is close to a million bucks. That's not even close to our total volunteer budget, okay? Now, let's talk about some other things. When Davey pulls out to go to Publix to restock groceries, when Davey pulls out, to go downtown Davie for maintenance on their vehicles. Who's there? Okay, well, Davie will cover us from Sunshine Ranches. Davie will cover us from their other facilities. They don't always move up vehicles. That's a concern all by itself. But the volunteers are there. The volunteers cover our town. I live out on 198th Terrace. The fire department is what, 172nd going to take them five minutes to get to my house. If I have a stroke, a heart attack, where time is absolutely critical whether I live or not, or if somebody's in a really bad car accident on 27, and it happens all the time, if they're coming from Davy, or they're coming from over in Sunshine Ranches at the Davy station, I hope I survive. I hope the person in the really bad car accident survives. It's not going to matter how long it takes for them to get to the hospital if the fire department can't get there first. So, you know, again, to me, that's an insurance policy, having the volunteers out there. 
The Davy is, like I said, they do a great job, but our volunteers go above and beyond all that. Thank you. Debbie Green, 5201 Southwest 199th Avenue. Um, I just want to say the fire assessments and in my taxes, it, whatever that is, it's well worth it. If we need to save elsewhere in the budget, as others have gone to, that will come on later in the meeting, that's where we need to find it. And just in response, well, everything Bob said, I agree with. But just in response to some of the things that were said as far as them not being certified, um, again, like Bob said, the chief has said several times, he's been up here and said several times that they are certified. And in regards to that there's two fire departments, there's, there's the Davie Fire Department that has, it's not sufficient to cover the entire town. There's a very big lapse of coverage out west. And as Steve has shown, it's several months ago, months ago now where he shared a study that was done that clearly stated how undercovered out west would be without them and when it was looked at as what it would be so if we spent all this as it was said spend all this additional monies that were spent on these the, the modules and whatever needs to be done they could have just started a building a real building which would be nice as well but you still wouldn't have the the staff to put in it because the cost that was showed what it would be to add an additional firefighter or rescue with the city of Davie or the town of Davie would be astronomically more than what we're paying to have the volunteer fire department who do a tremendous job and are and are there to you know especially out west so that we can sleep at night and know that there's somebody in god forbid you need somebody to be there they will be there thank you Jim Wolaski, Southwest Ranches. If you want my address, 5780 Southwest, 188th Avenue. Thank you. I would say all of the above, all these people here made some very good points. We, we heard about $8 million to buy a piece of property we paid too much for. That same $8 million we ginned up by repricing, okay, the easements and all the public owned property and the oak trees and every other damn thing to come up with the collateral for the loan. That could have been used for a fire station. Now, if you talk about an investment in land or an investment in people, in your own infrastructure, you're squabbling over trailers, what John Eastman says is perfectly right. When you add to $125,000, what the hell was that for? Why don't we break out those numbers? Just take that one little snapshot and let everybody look at what those uh, change orders probably were. And that's how every contractor makes money on the job, if there's any of them here is all the extras, all right? Why don't we break that out? Just put it in a newsletter or something so everybody can see what you guys approved on top of what you already budgeted for. Now, going back to Fort Lauderdale by the Sea, which is a combination of volunteer fire department, they did a management report about that and about how much labor you could save in a fire department and add extra people to man the area and they found in that, and this is a couple of years ago, I read it, I gave it to every one of you to read, if you remember correctly, when we first discussed this. They figured the capital equipment part of that budget was 5%. The rest was labor. So if we restructure the labor for the fire department, which the volunteer fire department, being it's non-union, and can get around collective bargaining, which we all know what that is, don't we? Okay, we could probably save a hell of a lot of money. And don't give me any crap about certification. Any one of those men is perfectly capable of doing the same thing another man is capable of. So it, the, the, the answers are quite obvious. You guys just have to act on it. And why you were so afraid to act on it when you negotiated the Davy contract, I don't understand. They didn't even entertain the thought. ASL, that certification, it's not the certification of the employee. I think it's the equipment that comes on the vehicle. There again, 5% in Fort Lauderdale by the sea, and they got a whole bunch of idiots down there 
on the east side of town. They got stabbings, they got drownings, they got drug overdoses. We don't have a lot of crime here. So we have old people getting heart attacks, strokes, or whatever that have to be diagnosed on a timely basis. So there is a few thoughts just off the top of my head, but the next time I'll probably be a lot more prepared. Thank you. Any additional public comment? Seeing no additional public comment, public comment is closed. Back to the council. Anybody got input or want to go first? Or? I'll make a couple comments. Go ahead. Steve, go ahead. Um, first of all, I appreciate everybody being out here um, and providing the input. Uh, it's good to know that uh, the public is engaged, that they're um, here and looking at uh, what we're doing, uh, making sure that we're doing the right things and are, uh, you know, looking over our shoulder. That's a very positive thing. It's a very good thing. And um, so thank you for coming out. Um, I want to just uh, make a couple of comments about, uh, about comments that were made. And um, the first has to do with uh, the volunteers and their cost and why, they, why they're part of our fire solution. A number of years back, we, well, let me start here. So we have two basic uh, locations that cover. We have additional where that help out. But we really have a uh, two two major locations that that serve um, Southwest Ranches from Davie, and one of them is at uh, Volunteer in Sterling, and it has a full complement of uh, personnel, has two two vehicles they can use and two full staffs that can where they can go out on either vehicle or both vehicles. Um, out west, uh, that is not the case. Out west, we have adaptive. What that means is there's a couple of different vehicles there, but they got to choose which one they use. When, as was as was pointed out earlier, um, when they need to go on, uh, you know, a service, uh, uh, maybe go to Publix or, or for other some other reason, maintenance on the vehicle or whatever they need to do, they leave that station unattended, and it's the volunteers that cover for it. We did, of course, look at, as a number of the residents have brought up, because it's, it's the right thing to look at, we did look at to see what it would cost to just have the full staffing at both locations. Certainly that's a, a simpler solution to have it all covered by Davy. Uh, at the time, and this is going back a number of years, it was an additional $1.2 million to do that. The volunteers are about three to $350,000. So, you know, we, we, can, we can throw stones at the volunteers, but they are doing an, an outstanding job, and they are saving this town an incredible amount of money. So, you know, you can look at it, what's it costing us to have the volunteers? It's legitimate to look at that. I, I, I commend everyone coming out and looking at that. Um, but I think, to be fair, you have to look at what they're saving us as well. And they're saving us an incredible amount of money to be able to provide the service that we would have to pay if we were going to go full coverage in both, um, both locations. The other thing I wanted to touch on was uh, the additional station out west. Um, great point. Uh, believe me, we have been searching for a location out west. The issue is not money. I mean, the issue is money. Okay? It doesn't come free. It's expensive. But the issue is we don't have a place to put it. It makes no sense to, to go and find the money until you have a place to put it. And I'm speaking to you as someone who has gone and talked to a, a large number of owners on Griffin Road west of 190th, um, trying to find that location. I have spoken to many, many individuals out there uh, personally to gauge their temperature of, of whether they would uh, be willing to uh, sell their property to the town to have a um, location out there. I'm talking to one of, the, one of the properties right now, still trying to find that. Um, we've negotiated here in town hall on numerous occasions with different ones um, to try and come up with a piece of property. The issue is not um, the cost to do it. The issue is finding the location to do it. It's what we need to do, frankly. And there's, I don't know of any, there's any debate about that. We need to do it. 
our, our current solution is, is far from optimal, and we've got to find that piece of property, and we've got to build the hardened facility on there so that it serves that, that, part, of the, that part of the town. So um, there's, no e there's no easy solutions here. Um, and I appreciate folks coming up and, and uh, voicing recommendations, frustrations, um, and, and suggestions. Um, it's, it's, I think it's positive, and it's a good thing. And thank you for coming out. Gary, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Um, last year, I think we had less than half a dozen people here at the uh, same same meeting. Uh, and uh, there's a reason why I like Steve to go first, because he covers all the little notes that I had written. And uh, he says it much more eloquently than I'm ever going to. And man, I'm going to miss you. <laughs> I'm really going to miss you. Uh, it, and he did hit all the high points of what I had. Uh, there's one item that I wanted to mention that was mentioned by one of the speakers, and I'm not sure everybody understands it, is tonight is the final vote on the fire assessment. There's not another meeting. This is it. We've already had the first meeting, and the number was larger on the increase, and we, had, we have since made moves to cut that back. So I just want to make note of that, uh, to let everybody know that. And uh, that's all I have on this right now. Okay. <clears throat> D? I also want to thank everybody for coming out. It was worked on very hard with Chief and, and his people, the boards, to try to cut as much as we possibly could to get it down to the bare bones without putting, you know, them in any harm's way. As far as their uh, equipment, that was cut, cut, and cut. And I don't think there's really any more cutting to do. I feel it's a very important entity, whether it is just for the fact that they've always been here. It is part of the town, and they do an absolutely incredible job of serving out west. It's nice to know that if I lived out there, knowing that they were there for me, I could, I could be at ease knowing that, you know, with my kids or my grandkids, that they would be there to cover it. And I'm the newbie. I'm still learning. I'm still going to make mistakes. But I do want to address one thing that was said, and, and Tracy has left, that I do care about everybody in this town. I mean, I disagree with a lot of people, and I'm sure they disagree with me. There's no uh, hiding that. But I care about the tax dollar. I looked at my own tax bill and was like, Ugh, you know, gasping, you know, thinking of all the increase. Uh, one thing that uh, Ms. Parrish had mentioned was that uh, uh, we, we pay these incredible prices for our bulk, and it's been no secret for many, many years. I probably will annoy a lot of people by even saying this. I could have got rid of it. It wouldn't have bothered me. Uh, it would have bothered my husband because then he would have had to take and make sure he disposed of it. But there's there's ways of getting around that too. It's looking at the future and the next contract that comes up to really critique it, go over it, and make sure that it's really truly what we want. Maybe we want to think uh, about a reduction on it to twice a month and not having it, or, or once a month and not having it twice a month. You know, there's all different kinds of options. And it really is difficult sitting here having the right to choose or not to choose for somebody else's money. We all pay our fair share of taxes out here, and, and I respect every single person that has come here and taken the time, like they've all said, to go through this. For the next items that come up in the budget, which we can still work on, and you guys are here giving your opinions. This is something that maybe you thought of that we didn't, and now we can focus on it and go after it and maybe make some changes there. So again, thank you for coming, and uh, I'm just hoping that I can maybe sit 12 years <laughs> and, and try to do a good job, and my biggest concern is the taxes. That's my number one thing, is keeping your taxes as low as I possibly can. Because by keeping yours lower, I know I'm keeping mine lower, and that makes me very happy. So thank you. Frank? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm very fortunate. I live right around, right next to the Davy Fire Department. So anything that happens, they're there. You know, I feel for Steve where he's at out there, and the Volunteer Fire Department is very important for him and the people that's out there. And what we got to stop? You talk about Volunteer Fire Department. I know some of them get paid. I'm not sure of how much what it is, but these people are devoting a lot of their time. To be there, like you know, a lot of them say, well, they want to get on the fire department. They figure that's the way to get there, but we're still got the opportunity for those guys out there helping us when we need them. So I've I'm supporting the volunteer fire department. Awesome, thanks, Freddie. Um, I won't be long-winded on it. The volunteer fire department has been around for an awful long time. Um, they've done a stupendous job throughout the years for us. Uh, I would say that if you live out west, you would feel they're a necessity, and I get that. Uh, the response times are better, I think, with them is a, is a way to put it. Um, having someone showing up, as Bob Hartman said, whether you're having a heart attack or whatever the case might be, time is of the essence, and you want somebody there that can uh, help or get an action or do something. And uh, so if it's you and it's your life, trust me, you, whatever the price is, you'll pay it. Um, so, but in moving forward, I got to tell you, you know, I'm, I'm in support of the volunteer fire department myself. Uh, you know, have we crunched their numbers and worked on it? We absolutely have. Uh, in replacing the trailers, that was part of the renegotiated contract with Davey. So that was a requirement that we had to do. Um, so uh, moving forward, the, the, Increase in property values and that money is almost uh, dollar for dollar offset in the increase that we have for this year related to the police and fire. The police and fire contract used to be separate when we took about a year last time, I guess, to renegotiate that deal. But we combined the two together and it's a five-year contract with a five-year renewal. So that's kind of where that's at. Um, Lori, I don't normally do this, but go ahead. Per year, not. Is it compounded or four and a half per year for five years? Compounded. It's compounded as you go. Okay. Well, but this year you're only dealing with this year. <coughs> right, but the increase is. But eleven point, and if the fire is all taken care of, if the fire is all taken care of within your fees, which you've lowered, which I don't think anybody would argue with those. So what I'm saying, the police would only be four and a half percent of the eleven point seven nine. No, I hear what you're saying, but when you combine the two of them or whatever, the police and fire, they're all separate. But Marty can explain it to you better. He just said that fire was paid with the non ad valorem assessment. So, um, Mayor V. Uh, go ahead. Your mic. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I need to just make sure you clarify. The fire assessment pursuant to Florida statutes only allows the fire protection component, not the ambulance, which is the rescue component. The rescue component has to uh, be funded through the general fund, which would be millage. Uh, there, there are revenues that you receive for ambulance um, receipts, but it, it do, no way does that cover a sufficient fire rescue expenditures. And uh, just to let everyone know and clarify, um, Council Member Breik is, is correct. It's the, the total public safety fire is in the $3.9 million range, of which the volunteer component is only in the 10%. Uh, that includes in the 300,000 neighborhood for just the volunteer uh, component. So of the 3.9, uh, the 310 percent is strictly the volunteer component in which uh, to reiterate what the council member said uh, provides a much um, extended coverage out west that has been determined necessary by your fire advisory board as well as council okay thank you marty all right so anyhow um that's kind of where we're at we've uh, gone through it uh, quite a few times the staff goes through it, Marty, with each and every one of us breaking down. We all have our little idiosyncrasies and pet peeves in different areas and different things. So we tweak, cut, 
chop, extend, whatever we can do to keep the, the dollar and the millage down. So that's all I got. I'm good. You got something else? No. Okay. All right. You ready to go? Yes, Mayor. We have a motion and a second. Okay. Call the question. Councilmember Schroeder? Yes. Councilmember Breakers? Yes. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Fiskelli? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. Marty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do we want to read the resolution sure. uh, first, please? A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, relating to the provision of solid waste services, facilities, and programs to residential properties in the Town of Southwest Ranches. For fiscal year 2018-19, commencing October 1, 2018, providing authority for solid waste services, assessments, providing purpose and definitions, providing findings, incorporating the solid waste special assessment methodology report, providing for an exemption for veteran service-connected total and permanent disability, approving the assessment role, and providing an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Public comment on this matter? Well, uh, can I excuse you? Oh, Marty, you, uh, you want to do your presentation first. Sorry. Yes, please. Let me make the presentation, then we can go into uh, public discussion and council discussions. Uh, we're moving on to the solid waste. Please uh, slide. We have a little technical difficulty. As a background, our solid waste garbage assessment is permitted by Florida Statute Chapters 197.3632. The annual rate establishment is required by our town ordinance 2002 -08. The proposed solid waste rates for fiscal year 1819 with the changes from the assessed for 1718 is displayed. You will see uh, the different trances. Uh, the rates differ depending on your lot parcel sizes. Uh, you will see our solid waste component. And if I could borrow the pointer, the solid waste component is on the left side towards the middle. That is fixed throughout uh, at 318 and 95 cents. The bulk waste cost per unit has an increase according to lot parcel sizes. And the average increase throughout is the 37% um, depending on lot parcel size. Going into the background of the solid waste impact that over, over the past five years from fiscal year 2013 to 2017, the solid waste collection rate decreased by nearly 35%. And unfortunately, the contractual agreement ended. After going out to bid in fiscal year 2017, uh, establishing numerous contacts, substantial negotiations, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder required significant cost of service increase to the neighborhood of 73%. The adopted residential rates in our current year, that's fiscal year 18, was smooth and increased by only approximately 27% overall property categories with the utilization of $300,894 in unrestricted solid waste fund net position. That is reserves. So reserves were used in prior year to smooth the rate increase. The fiscal year 2019 proposed average increase uh, is approximately 37% as previously mentioned over all property categories and will result in full cost recovery for the mandated contractual adjustments including CPI and fuel indices, 
as well as conservatively includes the maximum exposure for a potential true up generation factor. On a positive note, the proposed fiscal year 2019 rate for all ranges average higher than the all the property rate ranges retroactive from fiscal year 2012 by an overall average of less than 14%. So in, actual, in actuality, it's approximately a 2% increase when you go back to our 2012 rates per year over the past seven years. The future year changes will only be dependent upon our contractual adjustments to remain a fully user-based funded operation in accordance with generally accepted governmental accounting standards. That's all I have, Mayor. I'd like to turn it back to Council. Okay. Public comment on this matter. Feel free. Come on up. Hi, John Eastman, 188th Avenue. Uh, you know, I'm on a builder's acre, and I look at the amount of bulk that I put out. It 99% trimmings, you know, some sweepings, uh, occasional pruning of a tree. Uh, last last two weeks, I didn't put anything out. This time, I had a pile about this big. And if I was to take that pile and pay to dump it, it would be about $8. And that's for the whole month. So I'm really getting ripped off here. You know, either I'm subsidizing a lot of other people for their big piles or you're just really overcharging. I'm the contractor. You need to plant more hedges. I'm kidding. Right. It's uh, <laughs> but but it's all of us. And you know, some people uh, may have a little more vegetation on their property, so they'll they'll put out something every week. But you know, I think the average person on my street does not put out stuff, but maybe about every third time. That's what I see on the street. So uh, we're we're paying a lot. It's uh, it's expensive and. I think the problem is, is there's lack of competition. And I'm not saying this year, but I think we really need to look at maybe buying some trucks and having some place, as Tracy said, to collate it. And I think we can do it ourselves for a fraction because this is what the municipalities down in Dade do. El Portel, Miami Shores, uh, Biscayne Park. They, they handle their own bulk waste because it's far cheaper than having a contractor. If it was cheaper to contract it, they'd be doing it. So I think maybe uh, do a little research into their budgets uh, over the next couple of years and uh, see if this guy will be more reasonable with it. If he's not, then we have other options. Don't be afraid to, to get into it. We can always try it for a couple of years. If it doesn't work out, we go back. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Maybe Keith, I'll need your help with this. Um, I don't know legally that land that we have next to the women's prison and the dump. Could we utilize and think about this? As I did talk to a lot of people in the Pembroke Pines who poor Bergeron was getting, you know, fines left and right from doing the hurricane damage. Unfortunately, he was burning. And we have a lot of vegetation out here. We are the acreage. And we had a lot of plants required by the county. And that takes excessive trimming. Wouldn't it be feasible if we could use that land in any ways, if it's legal? I don't know. You'd have to look into that, talk to Keith. If we could use it to, to take our bulk, that's vegetation. It's worth separating. You know, we could separate our bulk. We've done it before for hurricanes. I don't see why we couldn't. And then we could use it even if it's a wood chipper. For $750, we can get a wood chipper and we can have mulch. We could have topsoil. We could do something that's good. And, and we could save that money in bulk instead of cutting it down, what we're getting rid of. And I do know we have a lot of people in the landscaping business that are just putting out anybody's debris from all over Day County to, to West Palm Beach. And they're using up our, our resources, but it's hard to prove. So I know that's a tackle where we're not going to feed. So I would think let's use that land. It's sitting there being mowed. We're paying to mow something. We're paying to insure it. We might as well utilize it. And maybe we can get logs in the winter. Maybe we can get wood chips. And maybe we can get topsoil. And let's try to find a way to cut down because the county did the increase. It's not you guys. And I know the county did a big increase in taking anything to the dumps. 
they really made a major increase on us. And it's going to be up to us to find a way around them. Thanks. She brought up a good point, but I don't think it's so practical. Um, I have a customer of mine that uh, was uh, one of the contractors down in Dade County. He has four drum grinders. Unfortunately, we had three drum grinders very recently where I live on 188th Avenue. Imagine that, a friggin' drum grinder. That's a beautiful noise to wake up to. So, but anyway, why don't we just um, go along with some of the trees, like a Shakovia tree, if I got it correctly. A Shofia. Whatever, whatever the hell it is, but it's a nuisance tree. Why can't we outlaw it? Why can't we give a homeowner an incentive to get rid of it? That thing just keeps on giving and giving you more expense. Go back with the natural trees, live oak trees. I replaced Australian pine trees with live oak trees at my property, and just like John Eastman says, you don't see much in my pile. First of all, they're going to dig up my front yard anyway, and I'll have to fix it. So it don't even go there. It goes, but don't go there. But anyway, my thought. Good evening, Jeff Cohen, 12801 Luray Road. Judge, it's a pleasure. Oh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the council, let me speak, if I could, with respect to uh, the proposed increase with respect to garbage and bulk pickup. Look, I I've heard a lot of talk tonight about keeping the rates low, keeping taxes down. But, folks, with respect to garbage and bulk pickup, that's lip service. Who's doing the negotiating here? Who are you folks dealing with? A 38% increase in the proposed taxes for bulk pickup, a 27.5% proposed tax increase for garbage is ridiculous. This is not holding the line. Who are you folks dealing with? Tony Soprano's garbage company? Who, who's negotiating these contracts? What's going on here, folks? Please, you need to relook look at this. You need to go back to the drawing boards. You need not pass these proposed tax increases on. Folks, uh, also, you're proposing uh, a, what is this? 11.79% uh, increase in ad valorem taxes, which I'm told is the third highest increase among municipalities in Broward County. Third highest. Only Hallandale Beach, whose mayor's been indicted, and the commission's in disarray, <laughs> And Oakland Park has a higher rate than us. And the issues in Oakland Park are entirely different than what's going on here. Folks, this is not holding the line. This is malfeasance. You need to look at these matters and come back to the taxpayers and give us better rates, much less in the way of tax increases. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, Stephanie Kewen. I'm a new resident on 198th, and I have a question, much less a comment. I'm not really equipped to, I'm not equipped to contribute. I have a question about the contract. I noted 73% increase when the contract ended, and has anything been done in this current contract that was negotiated? What terms do we have in terms of when it ends? Are you going to have that same issue? There was a comment about Annually, it won't happen again, but I'm curious as to the current contract that's just been negotiated, when does it end, and what provisions have been incorporated, if any, to ensure we don't ever get that 73% hit again? That's all. May I make one more comment? Go ahead, Your Honor. It's been commented on before, and it's certainly true with me. I'm the individual in my household that puts out a bulk pickup. Previous to this year, we had a wonderful bulk pickup operator on Luray Road. As Lori said, he would come by. You wouldn't even know he was there. The only thing we really put out are pomperons. This current operator digs a hole a foot deep to pick up three pomperons. Now, I don't, know that, I don't know if he's using lousy equipment. I know he's using different equipment than the previous vendor, or he's just unskilled, but he's quite untalented. Please, would you folks look into this? You know, the editor of the uh, Sunshine Ranchers Association suggested we put our bulk pickup in different spots so he doesn't dig a hole to China in one area of our yard. We just have lots of holes in the whole front yard. That's ridiculous. We need someone that knows what the hell they're doing. And the town should look into this, all right? Thank you. Bob Hartman. 
So let, let's talk about the contract. Let's talk about what all this means to us. The last two years of our last contract, we had lousy service. I mean, it was horrible. He knew he was losing the contract, so some days they filled up the gas tanks, some days the trucks broke down. So what do we do? We put all kinds of teeth in the contract. And normally, I'm all for that. But it's got to be done in a logical way. We're basically paying them a premium. They're a business. They're going to work in risk capital, risk, uh, risk fees, basically, in this scenario, where they can turn around and not lose money if they have a bad year with us. So they're going to up their contract 10, 15, maybe 20%. It depends on how risky they're, they're willing to get with their own money. So now they said when they were here discussing the contract that they built that in because I know all of your eyes bugged out of your heads when you saw the kind of increase it was. Now, I'm not aware of any, and I've asked, and you know, I, I realize there's different approaches. Some people don't want to go after them. I respect that. This is still business, and maybe we need to look at that. However, maybe this contract needs to be terminated with cause for breach for something. I'm not a lawyer. But when I worked for a large state organization called DOT, we always had you know, right to uh, audit their contracts to see if there was excessive profits. I don't know if we built that into this contract. However, maybe we need to find a reason to get out of this contract and negotiate some sort of a sloping type penalty structure where towards the end we've got teeth. Up front, they love us. they got five years that they need to make nice with us, but it's not working out. One other thing here as well, and I brought this up every year, I put out half a garbage pail a week. Can I have a little bit more time, yep, Mr. Yep. Mayor? All right. I put out half a pail a week. My wife is a recycling fanatic. We recycle everything we can. We put out a reasonable amount of bulk. Now, if I really paid for my consumption of service, 318 isn't a good number. If I paid for a garbage pail, and I don't mean the pail itself, but if I paid a fee for the amount of garbage I put out, and I'm talking solid waste, not bulk, I think that would be a much fairer approach. Because I see neighbors on my street and all over town. I don't want to pick on my neighbors because I just met a new one today. In any case, what's going on here is I'm subsidizing one of my neighbors who puts out six pails twice a week. Is that a reasonable approach? I don't know. But I would encourage you to renegotiate what we've got and restructure these penalty clauses because to me, that's where the big part of this money is going. Tipping fees don't change. Thank you. One of the things, and I don't know, you know, I wouldn't mind Tony Soprano if he gave me a decent price. I mean, it's not my thing. But anyway, like one thing, when we lived in Davie, we had waste management. And we had, they, I guess we paid for them in the contract when they switched, but we had much, you know, we had the big garbage cans, and they had the trucks that, listen, I know plants, I know nothing about garbage. They picked them up like that, and we had one can for garbage and one can for recycling. And we could buy more cans, but if we wanted more cans, I think we paid $2.15 a month, and we got extra cans. But this, I don't know, if y'all negotiated for five years, I mean, what is next year's rate increase? Did you guarantee them a percentage? No. You don't know? Well, then where did this number come from? And it's not 37, it's 37.88. When it's through with the audience, off to 38. when the audience is through, it gets back to us, I'll explain okay. part of that. And the other thing, when they were he was talking about a bashofia tree, I don't know many people that have more plants in a bigger garden than I do. But if once a year for $2,000, I call um, Grant Popper in Parkland, and they come down because the lady suggested putting it all in a pile. You can't do that. You'll get rats. You can only do hardwood, all this stuff. But if you have hardwood, and a Bashofi is a hardwood. I had that ugly thing I showed Doug taken out. But for $2,000, he comes in Hurricane, does all my trees, and then the hardwoods they put into this chipper. And so it sounds like $2,000 a lot, but not after what happened to our yard last year. But that, when he brings the chipper, he makes the mulch, dumps it on my driveway, and that's more than $2,000 that I would spend in mulch at Lowe's or Home Depot. So it's really cost effective if you have big yards. 
Mayor, council members, thank you. Mayor Eloy Perez. Roman, 178th and 54th in Rolling Oaks. I've been living here for about three, four months now. I moved over from Hialeah Gardens. I have to tell you, I did not expect to have uh, many of the things that I've run into, one of them being the garbage, both solid and the bulk. Disgraceful is not enough to tell you. I have pictures here. This is not garbage pickup. This is garbage spreading. I mean, it's, 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 this is a disgrace. You know, the other thing, we have little critters here called raccoons. You know, in Hylia Gardens, where I used to live, they would not be exactly punctual. Garbage pickup was, say, on a Monday, 7, 8, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Garbage was picked up. Here, one day they're picking it up at 7 in the morning. The next day they're picking it up. The next time, 7 at night. You know, this Monday, this Tuesday, they didn't pick it up on Tuesday. They came Wednesday. Disgraceful. You know, so when you're negotiating these things, you know, it's bad enough to pay for something let alone pay a lot for something, it's unacceptable to pay a lot for crap. I mean, this service is disgusting. So please take this into account. The bulk is another thing that I've had. It's just amazing. I've called them. They don't even answer my phone calls. Oh, what is that the, the supervisor's cell phone? <laughs> I've, I've called the supervisor. I, it, it, it's ridiculous. I got a call back like two, three days later. So, you know, one of the times that I've left bulk, one of the two times I've left bulk, you know, the answer was, you know, uh, you're over. I don't know how the heck I was over, but you're going to get fined. I said, okay, fine. They came a week later. Mind you, they didn't find me because they said, okay, we saw your, your grass all died from the, the bulk. So uh, just please, when you're negotiating these things, keep that in mind. And I have a question. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to pay out three acres, if I'm going to pay more for my lot size, can I dump three times as much? Bulk? No. How, how is that fair? You know, I feel at times that I'm 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 back in Cuba, you know, under a communist regime. This is this is ridiculous. Thank you. Bill Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Well, I'm finally been justified for all of the months I've sat up here and screamed and hollered about bulk and one of the great things that I keep telling you is that they've been digging a hole in my front yard and I have a foxhole facing to the west on 199th Avenue that if the Seminole Indians ever decide to rise up again I can dive in and fight them so and I'm sure a lot of other people have the exact same foxhole so it's a benefit that the town is giving us, not an attraction, ladies and gentlemen, having these foxholes. The garbage pickup is also, as I have said before, it's spreading it evenly among all of us instead of picking it up and taking it somewhere else. And I've shown you pictures and stuff, the exact same thing. So having justification of sitting up here month after month after month and telling you you need to put the penalties into effect and nothing ever happening is something that I now say again, put them into effect. Cure the problem. But as to the increase this month, uh, this year on our taxes, I understand because we subsidized out of our general fund last year to the tune of several hundred thousand dollars. I think it was somewhere 300 something thousand dollars to soften the blow for this contract. And this year we're putting the rest of the blow in there. And that is the word I want to use, blow, because what we're doing is we're throwing money after a very bad situation. And thank you very much. Have a good day. Michael Tiano, 185th Speedway. Um, long time no see. Long Thanks time no see. Out. It's nice to see you guys. Long time have I, heard that. I was actually cited because I put bulk pickup before my bulk pickup date, it was never picked up, 
And it just so happens my lovely daughter was working here as a volunteer for the town at that time. And I called when I got the notice and I just went ballistic. And she just kind of handed the phone off. <laughs> but it turns out that everybody down the road, we just got skipped. And code enforcement came by and cited all of us. This new company is the worst. And, you know, there's been some great suggestions here. One is those automated containers where the clamp comes and puts it in the truck. You reduce labor costs because it's all automated. We should look into that. And if you want a separate can, guess what? You pay a little bit more. I'm a family of four. I got a teenager and a tweenager. And my beautiful bride and myself, we put out one can a week or maybe two one-half of cans. And my bulk was out there this weekend, as of Saturday, Sunday, when I left to come here at 6 o'clock, and today is my bulk day, it's still sitting out there. This company is not reliable. The holes in the yard, I feel they're just putting them there for drainage to help accommodate all the water that we get. Um, but you guys need to seriously look into alternative measures. I love the option of we have land in this area. Let's make one for residents to bring their clippings, recycle them, mulch them, and give us the mulch. We can get rid of all that stuff, recycle, reuse, put it for our plant beds. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. My can lay on the 50th place uh, for 205. I've lived here since 1983. I've never had bulk pickup. I have two and a half acres with a couple of oak trees on it. So I don't want to pay any bulk pickup. How do I get out of that? <laughs> you know, and it's like living on a private road and you get to pay for repaving the whole town. You still got to pay for your own street. <laughs> all right real quick there's got to be another solution because they really are bad i mean you're you're gonna get penalized if you put your garbage cans out the night before or your bulk the night before like friday night but they're, then they're there they're there at like six in the morning seven eight and, and really they should not even be coming around on the weekends especially before nine o'clock to tell you the truth, because they make noise, and that's a noise violation by the state. So we really need to sit them down and have a little talk with them, I think. I think I'm hearing it from enough of the community that they are not being consistent, and it makes it confused for them whether they're going to haul butt at 6 in the morning and get their trash out on time, or whether they're going to get a fine because they took it out the night before. So we need to do something about that and definitely talk to that contracting person we have. Good evening. I haven't been up here in a while. I'm nice noticed. to see you. I'm walking without a cane. New hip. Good for you. Thank you, thank you. I'm so thrilled. Uh, bulk pickup. The scourge of the earth. Oh, I'm sorry. Deborah Goff Rose, 17330 Southwest 58th Street, Rolling Oaks. Oh, like I ever needed a mic. <sighs> anyway. I cannot tell you how many times this month, well, no, we're in September. It hadn't happened yet. But we've been skipped. We get skipped like once a month. Several streets in Rolling Oaks. They, and you're right, they spread. You know, if, if it were mar mulch, that would be great, but it's not. Um, now, do the nurseries pay for bulk pickup? They put it out. And... Uh, they don't pay taxes. They if may. you know they put it out, you should call town hall and report it. They're required to have a dumpster. We have. We have left messages, especially on 46th Street, that uh, nursery next to the fire station. The firemen will tell you it's out there. Tammy Dollar will tell you it's out there, and she's called numerous times. Um, is there some way we can charge them more? And if they don't pick up for us, can we find them? I mean, if they're not picking it up and a week will go by, and it's like, oh, I forgot that street. And they want to find us, can we find them? It's really ridiculous. I realize y'all are doing your best to, you know, you can't police everything, but appoint someone to do it. All right, that's all. Thank you. 
Thank you. Tiffany Trotter, 5620-163. Into the mic, please. Sorry. Can you That's hear me okay. now? Um, I'm just Can't hear you if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just adding insult to injury now. Um, I'm in area 2A, so yesterday was my bulk pickup, and my entire street has bulk on 163rd. They did not come and pick up our bulk at all. So mm. insult to injury there. I don't want to get a fine because I put out my bulk on Monday, and they were supposed to pick it up on Tuesday. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments? No additional public comment? Public comment is closed. Oh, come on up. I think with a tiny bit more work, we've just established cause. Okay, public comment is closed. Back to us. Yeah. Comments? Go, Steve, go ahead. Well, hold on. Wait, wait one second. I'm going to let Andy go so he can explain a little bit about this on the. Yeah, just trying to hold to the, the subject at high hand, which is the assessment. I, I want to address the history of the, the fire contract. I'm sorry, the, the uh, garbage waste contract. Waste My apologies. Contract. But separate, absent that, I do want to thank the residents who have been here tonight and have been vocal because there are many people here tonight who aren't here normally. So this input on your experience is valuable to us. I know Sandy's been making notes. We're, the code's been listening. Uh, th this is valuable. And I thank you for coming pa and passing the information along. As far as the solid waste contract itself, I've got to go back to about 2012, which was when the county's resource recovery board, the agreement or 26 municipalities in that, that came to an end. And the town at that point went out to bid on solid waste collections and, and disposal. And the numbers that had been reported from waste management at the time, who had been doing the trash collections for the town, uh, our bulk numbers and a lot of our trash numbers were mixed with other municipalities. So the numbers that were reported and we actually used in our bid back in 2012 underrepresented what the actual town numbers were. For, for, for waste. So at that time, SWS came in, which became LGL, got the contract and lost money for five years. We had a very good contract from the town standpoint, from a price standpoint for those five years. It was not a good contract for them, but we held them to it. When we went out to bid a couple of years ago, because those numbers had been underreported and our bulk numbers were, were seen as, as huge as they were, when, when we tried to get the major players out there in the market, you're all familiar with waste connections and waste management and others, they would not come to the table and put in a bid. So we got three bids, two from very small companies that, that really we weren't as familiar with, didn't have the, the history and the track record, who also had higher pricing than WastePro, who we ultimately went with. So at that time, we went with Race Pro because that was the best contract that was, that was out there that was available to the town as far as uh, responsive and responsible bidder and, and, and response. The increase last year went up substantially, which was the new contract. The town had excess money in our solid waste fund, which we used last year to soften, and Marty talked about that during his presentation, we softened the increase on the solid waste fee last year. This year, what you're seeing in an increase is we're catching up to what the new price is. As far as going forward, there are caps in there, uh, fuel, cost of living, but approximately 4 to 5 percent. I, I can tell you as we, as we go forward, we will not see those kinds of increases that you're seeing this year. This is not going to be a year-to-year -year increase. So we had a huge increase in the cost of the new contract, which we partially subsidized last year. What you're seeing this year is the full impact of that increase of the new contract. Going forward, that will be lessened. And as far as just one other thing I want to touch on, which I almost got away from me, but the bulk collections, you're all very familiar with the driver who's, who's digging the holes. He's no longer with Waste Pro. Uh, we had a, multiple I conversations. Last week, we got another guy digging holes in, apparently. Then we're, we're going to file that, that complaint as well, because we don't need people coming in here and tearing up, tearing up our property. So I, I hear what you're saying. We, we will work on that. The worst offenders we've tried to get rid of. 
the nurseries and others that are putting out bulk, we need to be aware of those. We are, we're making every effort where we can to switch those people over to dumpsters so that they're not putting their solid waste and their bulk out because at the end of the day, you're all subsidizing them and that's not right. So we are actively working on that right now. I know Sandy has on her desk a couple of binders that are, I, I think they're six inch binders full of some of the ag properties and some others that don't have solid waste to set or that don't have dumpsters that we're making sure have dumpsters. So we, we are trying to, to get those numbers down. So we're actively working on that. Thank you, Mayor. Uh -huh. D, go ahead. This isn't the end of this. We still have another hearing on this. So we're going to be continuing to see what we can do to change this, to get this down even lower. But uh, because it's a contract, Corrector. I'm going to assume that you have to live up to your contract. Dee, I think this is the final one on this. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh. Solid waste. I, I apologize. I didn't right. know that this, that's tonight. Okay, well, I guess this is it. Can I ask? Newbie. Newbie. I can I, can I? Go ahead, Lori. Don't usually do this. I apologize, but I even talked to you about this, Andy, and I talked to your staff, and I talked to those idiots that work at the company. But the thing of it is, is I said to them and to you, didn't they do the due diligence because they had in my neighborhood a lady in a white car that drove around in the previous one, and I'm not even a political ally of his and think he did a better job. But they followed him around and they had a handle when they bid the contract on how much bulk there was. And I mean, I've complained to Doug, I've complained to you, I've complained to the ladies at the town. I mean, I got a nursery guy down the street from me and if he opens his gates his two big trucks, you see it. He puts eucalyptus clips out. I remember telling Doug, he's got eucalyptus trees out there. I'm probably one of the few people that know what a eucalyptus tree is, but he doesn't have any in his yard, but he runs a landscape thing. I mean, but he's always been doing it for the three years I've lived here. So I mean, but, and I think the $300,000 y'all saw from the Blowwoods was probably the money from the Resource Recovery Board. That, oh, that wasn't the money from the Resource Recovery Board they gave you back? No. Oh, all right. Go ahead, Dee. No, no, You're good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I mean, they knew what they were bidding on. Okay. Who wants to go next, anybody? You're good? You're good? All right. I want to say something related to this bulk trash. Uh, it went up, what, 50 or 100%? What was the total price? It went up 50% or 100% when we got the new contract? I think it was 73%. Okay. So it went up 70 something percent. I was not on board with dealing with it the way we did. We had over amount of money in reserves related to garbage and stuff, and they wanted to reduce that down, thought we had too much, and they chose to soften the blow. I said, listen, it is what it is. Deal with it, put it out there to the public, because I didn't want to have it happen like it has happening right now. So half of it last year you didn't feel because we used 300,000 we had in reserve of everybody's money, and we paid it for you. So this year you get this uh, then additional, the other half of that increase this year. I wanted it to come all last year, all at one time, so it wasn't something that came up this year. So I was not on board, wasn't in favor of this. I actually called a special meeting to address this, and everybody chose to use that $300,000 to soften the blow. So I want you to know I wasn't a party to that. I felt that it should be, it is what it is, the increase is what it was, and move forward with it so we didn't have to deal with it again this year. So, all right, well, go I wasn't going to say anything, but uh, feel sure free. It up. I, I've got a. Uh, so, last year, we, we have the fund where we accumulate uh, monies that uh, um, associated with waste and bulk pickup, right? And, and for various reasons, it's been growing here, there, and, and for o over a number of years. We got to the point last year where you know the state provides a recommendation for what how much you should have in reserve for an emergency we had reached three and a half times that amount three and a half times there comes a point this is your money this isn't the town's money this is your money there comes a point where you deserve your money and the town should not be holding on to it any longer and so, yes, I, I fought hard to give that $300,000 back to you, the residents, and I'm proud to say I did it, and I don't regret it. The hurricane came through, and you know what? We still have 
plenty of reserve. We still have about double the reserve we need. So I, I don't apologize for it. I don't, I don't regret it. I stand behind it. If anybody has a problem with the town giving back your money, you know, you can take it up with me. But I think it was a great thing to do. I think it was the right thing to do. A um, couple other things that uh, I'll put on there. I think that uh, uh, so long as I'm talking, I'll, I'll yap a little longer, and I apologize <laughs> for that. But um, the, the equipment that they are using in Waste Pro is not the right equipment. John pointed that out a while ago. Um, and I know we've talked to them a number of times, and they haven't, and he's gone, but they have not changed that equipment yet. That's outrageous. That's not right. And, and I will admit to something where perhaps I was wrong. If I'm going to admit to something where I believe I firmly I was right, I'll admit to something where I thought I was wrong, where I feel I might have been wrong. And that is that I was one of those voices that said, you know, this contract came in when Irma came around, and they had a rough start, and, you know, it was, it was, it was a mess. Frankly, it was a mess. What was, da what was bulk from Irma and what is normal bulk, it was a very rough start and rocky start. Let me jump in. Um, the competition was with FEMA, so they couldn't kick into play till FEMA was done. So that's right. what that was about. Right. So there was, there was, it, was, it, was, it was a big mess when we got started just because of the timing of the contract started just right up when, when Irma hit. And so, so I was one of the voices that said, you know what, we need to give them time to get into their stride and, and, and do it right. Well, it's been a year. They've had plenty of time to get in their stride. I I'm ready to, to kick in the teeth, and I'm ready to, to, to do the penalties. Um, you know, the honey has not worked, so it's time to uh, bring out the vinegar. Okay, so anyhow, back to where I was on this. So they broke it up. They used 300000 my position was, if you're going to use 300000 all well and good if you want to do that. But we haven't had a storm in 10 or 12 years. We're past due. <laughs> so it wasn't six weeks later and that next storm showed up. But aside from that, if they wanted to use the $300,000, I wanted the full impact in that one year so you didn't have it again this year. So you had the increase from last year and we buffered it. And had we added it all together in one year, we wouldn't be sitting here having the discussion about the garbage thing because you would have kicked in the difference and we would have addressed it all in one year. Anyhow, so... Uh, you would have paid this huge amount for two years rather than one year. No, you wouldn't. You would have had your you buffer... You would have paid it last year and this year. No, it, not yes. if you... Listen, the increase was what the increase was. We c took it, we cut it in half, we, we took $300,000 subsidized it, now here we are this year hitting you with the other 50% of it. That's not what I wanted to do and that's not what I agreed to do. I said, give it to them what it is in reality and not have to address it this year. So here we are again having to address it this year That's right. because we didn't hit it with a full boat. So the $300,000... You would have paid twice as much last year and our reserves now would probably be... Well, hold on. That's fine. But what we could have done and we didn't do and didn't discuss it was I'd the rather three... rather have you all have your money back. That's was the 300... Listen, you could have given them their money back and just build them the difference and all addressed it in one year and not have it again this year. But it's Anyhow. the amount of money and the service sucks. But, but let, let me jump in for a second. That's something that we're going to fix. We are going to get that done. Uh, John Eastman came up with a great idea. The, the, uh, the part of the equipment that picks it up, the, the, the bucket the, or whatever. The teeth. The teeth to put a different apparatus on it so it doesn't dig down into the ground. It just Take like a piece of pipe, it. cut it in half, you weld it on there, There's it's a straight a, rounded piece. It's also scraping. But he can't do that. And, and they've gotten enough calls from the residents, not just us, from the residents where they should have fixed this. So maybe it is time, like everybody thinks, let's get tough, let's pull out the big guns, and if we have to find them, then we find them because they're not doing what they promised to do. They're just digging crevices down everybody's road. I mean, we're already talking about putting concrete slabs in uh, down the uh, canal embankments because they're just destroying them. And if they can't get better help and they can't train them better, then that falls on them. That shouldn't be on us. Okay, you good? All right. So. Uh I'm good with that. I just wanted to air that out and you all to realize what that was and what that was about and how it was. So uh, my biggest concern was after we gave back the $300,000 and after having that storm, that they'd come in back and be asking for a special assessment to re-increase our revenue. We were blessed 
and that hasn't happened yet, but we haven't been reimbursed by FEMA yet either, so. <laughs> Anybody else? We're good? Call the question. Council Member Schroeder? <laughs> In November. <laughs> yes. Council Member Breikers? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Fiskelli? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. All right. You leading off here, Andy, or what? Yeah, I do. Uh, before the presentation, I do have a statement I need to read into the record, Mayor. Okay. Pursuant to Florida Statute, Chapter 200, 065, uh, Section 2E1, the first item to be discussed tonight is the percentage increase in millage over the rolled back rate and why. For fiscal year 2018-19, the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, is considering a levy of 4.9509 mills, which is a 14.38% increase over the rollback rate of 4.3283. This increase results primarily from higher contractual costs pertaining to the second year of a five-year public safety services contract for both police and fire rescue, as well as funding for new and or ongoing capital improvement projects from the proposed budget book. Millage funding for the town's roadway surface refacing and drainage projects mm -hmm. through the Transportation Surface Drainage Ongoing Rehabilitation Capital Improvement Program, also known as TISDOR, decreased $20,000 to $450,000 or .3342 mills. Additionally, this budget provides for the funding of multiple program modifications, including quality of life and service level improvements, public safety, parks, recreation and open space pros, and other transportation capital improvements. The millage for operating purposes without the TISDOR project is 4.6167. After numerous advisory board meetings, council discussions, and a budget workshop, the revised budget totals $17,992,574, which includes a general fund budget totaling $12,900,059, just over half of which provides for police, fire protection, and rescue services. A capital projects funds budget totaling $265,000 to not just maintain facilities, but also improve our public safety as well as pros infrastructure. Special revenue funds budget comprising of the transportation fund totaling $1,625,980 to maintain as well as improve streets, roadways, and drainage. And the volunteer fire fund totaling $203,338. A debt service fund budget totaling $1,055,972, which provides for one year of principal and interest payments on existing loans, as well as for activation of the town's emergency line of credit due to Hurricane Irma. And finally, an enterprise fund comprised of the solid waste, bulk waste, and recycling utilities budget totaling $1,942,225. The millage rate and budget require two public hearings. The initial hearing is tonight, with the final hearing and adoption is scheduled for Thursday, September 27th, 2018 at 6 p.m. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Doe. Gonna read. Uh... Okay, yes. Could we read yep. the resolution into the record? A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving and adopting the tentative millage rate for taxation of real property lying within the boundaries of the Town of Southwest Ranches for the 2018-2019 fiscal, fiscal year, commencing October 1st, 2018, and ending September 30th, 2019, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Go ahead, Marty. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have slides now as it pertains to the tentative millage rate and our budget forthcoming. We'll take one at a time. Uh, this is our first public hearing. Uh, f in regards to the millage, uh, we'll be providing you a comparison for TISDOR from year to year, last year to next year. We'll be providing a min municipal rate comparison, and then we'll give you an overall history of the Southwest Ranches millage percentage to our total direct and overlapping millage. Now, the important thing to note, as the slide indicates, that the tentative millage proposed tonight reflects a millage and net expenditure decrease of 0 0.0381 and in dollars, $51,313 respective, respectfully. Pursuant to the council direction received during our August 21st, 2018 budget workshop, 
The two store is shown between year to year. You'll see that the decline uh, from the Tisdor funding from 495,000 to 450,000. Uh, the millage as uh, presented and proposed is 0.3342 versus 0.3612. Regarding our millage comparison, that for fiscal year 18, that's our current year, our Southwest Ranches Operating millage plus our Tisdor combined millage is the seventh lowest combined operating and debt millage in Broward County, excluding the unincorporated area. The proposed fiscal year 19 millage rate, including the Tisdor, moves the relative position of Southwest Ranches to eighth lowest of 31 municipalities. The relative position of Southwest Ranches therefore remains among uh, the upper 25 percent. Uh, 23 municipalities are proposing millage rates higher than Southwest Ranches for fiscal year 2018-2019. So here are 31 municipalities. You'll see we hit the eight, uh, the eight slot where it's highlighted. Um, so in effect, we're in the, the best and lowest 25%. Uh, with the impact of the rate, it only bumped us up one notch from seventh to eighth place. Um, we should be proud. It's, it's, as you look at the comparison between uh, other municipalities, most are over five. <coughs> Uh, uh, 5.0 of millage, with some, as you'll see, in the last three, four, are breaching eight, nine, uh, or more in their millage rate from um, compared to ours. Now, our total direct overlapping property tax rate, you will see, uh, and this is important for everyone out there in the cameras, out uh, in the audience, that. The total bill you get from your trim notice is not coming 100% to the town of Southwest Ranches. Only 27.54%, as indicated on the yellow side, is the Southwest Ranches component. Uh, you have other entities, the school boards, uh, which are debt and operating components. You have Broward County government components. South Florida Water Management, your, your Navigation Districts, Children's Service Count, Council, and as well as our South Broward Hospital District. So uh, the total millage you see on the far right, 17.9780, uh, R4.9509, uh, again, represents just under 28%. For a comparison of the combined millage rate history for the past 10 years, uh, from year to year, you will see we, we do have from 18 to 19 um, a proposed increase from 17.6511 to 17.9780, but these rates are well below the 2000 or all time highs of the 2010 um, and previous years, uh, all previous years. Uh, so uh, that's where we stand for the combined mill rate history. That's all I have in regards to the millage. Turn it back to the mayor for public comment. Anyone that wants to get up and join us for public comment, feel free to. Noel Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. I didn't even mean you. I'm kidding. <laughs> that was a wonderful song and dance the bottom line is this I do not want to see this council raise the millage rate higher than it was last year period that will give you an increase because the value of the homes have been assessed higher but otherwise you are putting a large amount of money out of our pockets for fire and for mainly for bulk 
and garbage this year. To actually raise the millage rate in addition is an insult to every person who lives within this municipality. Because our taxes, we look at as an entire thing. You put the fees in there, you put the taxes in there, and how much more is it that I'm paying to this town than last year? And we're paying a lot more this year, even if the t millage rate stays exactly the same as it was last year. And it is a disgrace that you cannot find the cuts that you have to make to keep the tax rate, the millage rate, the exact same rate as last year. And I'm not talking about that you lowered Tisdor a little bit, which you'll raise again next year. I'm talking about the actual millage rate that we pay for our general fund and services, excluding Tisdor. Make the rate the exact same as last year because you have raised everything else on the periphery and that is an abomination that this council better get its kahangas together on. Thank you. I heard a, a number about debt on a loan. Is it fair to ask what is the, uh, the interest expense for the prison property of, I believe, eight million plus? Can we get that number? It's in the low threes uh, presently, locked in. Uh, uh, no, no. Rent. What is the, the gross amount that you pay in interest every year for that Not property? He'll have to get it up. He'll get it for you, but okay. Yeah, let's keep going. All right. Yes, I can show it to you. I'll meet with you later on it. I have it in. It's in the budget book. We could look at it together. Okay. I would like to know that number, and I would like to know why the investment, a non-performing investment that I can see. Why in the hell are we doing that? That's we need to liquidate that property. That was a there, bad there, there dumb are, there deal. There are other things we're working on behind the scenes that we can't divulge. Everybody's so. got things behind the scenes, and we got taxes going up in the air, and everybody's upset about it. But when you take a chunk of money like that and you put it out there in space, and we're bitching about all the little things, and there's a couple of big things like investing in our fire department that would offset some of the money we're we're complaining about right now. Uh, you know, we restructure the labor and a few things like that, build a real firehouse instead of, of a bunch of temporary shacks and give these guys decent equipment. When Mr. King's wife went in that canal, under, uh, I understand that the Davy Fire Department sent recovery divers from over there in, in Davy. I forget what fire station is what. But our own people that were trained and certified couldn't borrow a tank from the Davy truck that had tanks but didn't have a guy certified from their department to dive in the water. These are all things that really bug me. So. John Eastman, 188th Avenue. Um, what Newell said is right. You know, we've already taken the hit on the service fees. It's huge. You need to sharpen your pencils, go back, and make this a flat uh, mill to uh, throw another half a point on, in addition to the school tax we're going to be paying that was just approved and a possible sales tax increase. I mean, money's not in the street to just go pick up. You have to earn it. And the money we're paying you guys for these taxes, I have to make double that and pay federal taxes and everything else. So, you know, you spend 2000 you had to make four to get it. So anyway, uh, the staff, the council, the senior employees, I give you an F on this. You really should not have done this. And if you need help with the cuts, we spent extra money on Tisdor because it was a good deal, you know, economy of scale, getting more road done. Fine, we agreed with that. Okay, so this year let's take a break from it. Uh, don't do the Tisdor at all. Let's continue patching the roads for another year 
to flatten the tax out. Um, there are several other areas that, that money can be saved, but you know every department, Andy, has to come come to you and say how they're going to get their expenses down. That's how it's done in the real world, in the business world, you know. And we don't have deep pockets. You know, everybody's struggling out here. There's retired people. I was in the uh, zoning meeting the other morning. There's a guy. He's taking borders in just to keep his property alive. And uh, he's, not, he's not alone. There's a lot of other people like that. So as far as what Newell said, he's right on point. You know, we, we t took it with all these fee increases. You need to uh, smooth the millage out and, uh, you know, get in the habit of cutting rather than continually increasing. And Andy, what you said about all these necessary fees and obligations and all, you know, a lot of that is gray area and they can be pushed back and, and delayed. You just tell those authorities, hey, we don't have the money this year, sorry. Bob Hartman, 5441 Southwest 198 Terrace. I'm not going to repeat what they're saying. Everybody makes sense. One thing that we didn't do here in the public this year, we did it with all the boards as you went through the budgets on a per group basis. So you really didn't review the capital plan unless you're planning on doing that in the next meeting. And I'm chair of the drainage committee. I want more money for that group. I mean, we have drainage problems. But what can we look at? What can we look at across the board on all of our capital projects? Those are big number things. What can we bring down? I mean, I realize Andy's got to have a couple of nickels to give people raises when they do a good job. I don't want to see money taken out of the staff's pockets because if they start looking, we lose some great assets. But there's got to be places to make up. I mean, I'm amazed at 11%. Um, it's a lot of money, and that's along with our, our property taxes increasing just due to the save our homes. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money. Um, I'd love to see it erased, use last year's rate. I mean, we could all use the difference. Um, you know, I'm finally making up a little extra money now that the economy's booming. I'm working extra hours. Projects are coming my way. But when the taxes go up around me, and not just you guys, but we saw the difference this year, I kind of feel like it's not worth working as hard. I'm working my butt off, and all well, you mean, it, it, government's got their hand in my pocket, and I, I definitely resent it. Um, I know you guys are all pretty conservative people, and show us what you're made of. This is the time, because we're, we're getting a lot of money taken from us this year. And five years from now, I'm a senior citizen. Five years from now, I'm a retiree. Five years from now, I'm on fixed income. What worries me about this is those folks. You know, John mentioned five seconds. John mentioned somebody who's got borders in their house to make ends meet. It's a great idea, I'm thinking. I mean, if we get to that point, I don't want to leave this town because I'm being taxed out of it. So please do the best you can. Thank you. Eloy Roman, uh, 178th and 54th. Whatever I'm going to say now pertains to Rolling Oaks. Uh, again, I've been living here a little while. I just want to know why the increase. You know, I wake up in the morning. My friends all live by the ocean. They smell ocean water. I smell manure. I knew I was moving into that. That's what I wanted. I wanted to be rural. I have to put salt once a week in my water system. I don't have city water. I have a septic tank. If the wind blows more than 20 miles an hour on 54th, I lose power. FPNL has been there several times. The whole block loses power. Um, you know, the the electricity wires are above ground, so when the hurricane comes, we're out of power for a month. Uh, I just found out Davy Police patrols our streets. I had no idea. I have not seen a Davy Police officer where I live. I've not seen one where I used to live. I used to see a police officer all the time. Um, if it rains, I can take my boat out. We flood. Uh, every landscaping company has their business in Rolling Oaks. So 50% of the traffic that I see there is landscaping. You know, this is my experience. This is what I see. So the drivers come in the morning, they drop off their cars, and they leave in their trucks. That's, that's a lot of people going into my neighborhood. Mind you, there's one entrance, one exit. 
why the increase? I, I just don't get it. And and I'm 43 years old, and I, I view if, if, if the rates keep on increasing year by year by year, by the time I'm a senior citizen, I won't be able to afford to live here. I mean, come on, come on. Listen, I'm a physician. I give chemotherapy in my office. I deal with cancer patients every day. And I deal with insurance companies who don't want to cover a thing. And you know what? All of my patients get their chemotherapy. There's always a way. We work harder. I mean, there has to be a way. I mean, this is ridiculous. And there are several neighbors of mine that are telling me that if this keeps up, they won't be able to afford to live here anymore. I mean, something has to be done. And, you know, please fight for it. Thank you. Michael Tiano, 185th Speedway. Um, I just, eh, the rates are going up. Are we getting anything for it? Are we keeping the same thing stagnant? Because guess what? We work every day. A lot of us don't get raises. Or if we do, they're so minuscule, it doesn't keep up with the price of gas, medicine, and food. So our, our property values are going up. You're getting more. Everybody, this gentleman just spoke about nurseries. I live in nursery hell. I have a nursery behind me. I have one in front of me. And I have trucks that are nonstop every morning coming up and down my street. I have cars passing them left and right. Davey only shows up when the cars aren't passing everybody. They're never there. And if they do show up to do some work, they're so obvious that nobody's even going to misbehave. Nothing's gone on with the traffic problems. Whoever's patching the roads, I think I could do better with a bag from Home Depot and a stamper. I could get it flatter than this crew that you've got this year. They don't cut them square. They don't lay them flat. Getting close to 100, um, heading towards Sheridan on 185th, you've got a section there that's probably 20, 30 feet long where the, the asphalt's just starting to peel away. They patched part of it, and it's like the ripple effect. The speed bumps have been in a state of disarray for the last easily 10 years. They're not even speed bumps, man. It's like hitting this lip right here every time you hit it with your car. Nothing's been done, but yet the rates keep going up. Keep the rate the same, or give us something for the money that we're going to give you. If we're going to give you more, do something. Thank you. Any additional public comment? Seeing no additional public comment, public comment is closed. Back to the council. You... I'm going to go first. Go ahead. I don't usually like doing that, but I'm going first. Could be worse. You could be in Pembroke Pines right now. Their increases are off the charts. These people are going to pay, pay, pay. Big time pay. As, as far as the bulk, we're required by our laws to have so many trees on our property. You have to have so many. Now, there are people that violate, that don't do it, or take them all out, clear it. There, there is that. But when you live with such heavy vegetation, you have to groom it. And you've got to cut it and take care of it. Should we think of another way maybe to get rid of it? Probably. You do get what you pay for, and you are living in an absolutely unique area. As far as the cops cruising the streets, believe me, I'm out there all day long because I am of retirement age, and I can afford to ride around and look to see where they are. But you're not in Hialeah. You're in Southwest Ranches where crime rate is very low, and you know it's addressed immediately. I know what it's like to come from Hialeah. Been there, done that. Uh, but you're not dealing with the same situation as you are out here. Like I said, the crime rate is very low compared to in Hialeah. In, in front of the building that we owned, there was probably a cop car that rode down that area every 45 minutes because that particular area was really bad. Um, It's, 
nobody wants to pay, but everybody wants. And in order to have this, you do have to pay. And you should be getting the bang for your buck. And there's only so much cutting you can possibly do. I encourage anybody to go and get that book, like Mr. Hartman has or Mr. Eastman. Look through it. Get your pens and papers out. And you call us and let us know where you think we should cut. Because this isn't over yet. I mean, we're still going to do more cutting. That's for you, Marty. Um, I, I want to see it down. But I know to live here is a, is a wonderful opportunity, and I have to pay for it. I'm not getting that in Cooper City or Pembroke Pines or Miramar or Hollywood or any place else. Only here. Only here are you going to find that. And I can honestly guarantee you that you'll, you'll never be unhappy living here, no matter how much manure you smell. It's, it's great. <laughs> it's better than smelling gas and fumes and everything else from all the industrial that goes on in other municipalities. We do not have an abundance of commercial. Some of those municipalities are nothing but commercials. I'm going to take one that I know for sure, Sunny Isles. Is anybody here familiar with that? Sunny Isles has more money than God. They, they can't give it away. They don't know what to do with all their money. But we don't have that problem. We have a budget we have to work from. We try really hard, I think, to stay inside of it uh, and, and keep as much of the commercial out so we are not a Hialeah or a Pembroke Pines. I mean, look what's happened to Davy. Davy has gone so much commercial, it isn't even funny. You ride down Davy, some of these roads, and they're building massive uh, 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 apartments and condos and, you know, whatever. It, it's not quite as bad as you think. Like I said, I, I urge everybody to, and I did it before I became council. I would think of something that where they could cut or they could shave this back or not do this project, put it on hold for a while. It wasn't like it was a dire necessity. You know, we can do things like that if we have to put something on hold. Let it go for a year. So, I, like I said, I encourage you all to really sit down and look at the books and call in and give us your, your input. It might be something that we didn't think about and we could take it off. You know, 5000 here, 10000 here, you know what happens to it? It turns into $100,000. We have agricultural exemption out here. One of my things. We lose 900 and some thousand dollars a year just on the ag exemption. That's for all those nurseries and whatever. That's a lot of money. If we had that in the budget, not a problem. That would, that would really help us a lot. And it was brought up tonight about the dumpsters. How many people are putting their stuff out that all of us are paying for? Not right. We got to get them. We got to make them abide by the rules so that we don't have to pick up their slack and pay for it. I guess that's it. Steve? Gary, What's Steve? that? Steve, do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll go. Um, I'd like to uh, roll back on the slide uh, on the PowerPoint, if we could, Russell. Oh, okay, Richard, go back to, I want to go back to the slide that shows uh, the various, no, the one before that, actually a couple, yeah, one more, perfect. Um, and then I'm going to want to move ahead one slide in a minute. Um, so... What this is, is this is the millage rates of all the other, all the, all the towns in Broward County, all the cities and towns in Broward County. Um, I want to note two things on this. Uh, the first one, obviously, the dark line is Southwest Ranches. And what we're talking about here is this increase from 4.46 to 4.95. As has been pointed out, it's, you know, a half a mil. It's a, it's a big increase. And so, you know, nobody's hiding it. There it is. It's right in front of you. It's not good. It's not what we want. 
and as uh, Dee just mentioned, you know, the goal is to continue between now and the final vote to work it down even more. However, the other thing that I want to show on this is that while we're not the best in the county, we are number eight. We're at 4.95. You know, Pompano Beach right behind is 5.6. Um, you know, Pembroke Pines 6.1. You know, you can go to the next next page if you could. Um, you know, it goes all the way up to, uh, you know, Lauder Hill at almost 10, 10 mills, more than double what we pay. So we're, we're in a, in a uh, I'm not saying that that makes what we we're doing good and right. And that's why I pointed out that there's, there's, it's a huge increase and we need to work to minimize it. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying you should be happy with this increase. I'm not happy with it. I don't think there's anybody up here that's happy with it or out there that's happy with it. So we're going to continue to work on it. We're going to see what we can do, what we do. But I just want to put some perspective around it. Um, we, we have worked year in, year out to keep our taxes low. And this year is, is really difficult for us. And so we're feeling it more than, than we historically have. Um, uh, but in, in some ways, we're, uh, you know, being hurt by our own success in the past and that we've been able to, to find places to, to cut in the past. And, and we're, frankly, we're just running out. So um, we're going to continue to work. We're going to continue to try and minimize it. But we're still doing really well. And I just want, I just want the public to know that we're working hard and, and we're working. We're doing well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, so, yeah, so, I mean, last year, last year we had, last year we had no increase at all. Um, we, we took a lot of, you know, we took a lot of hits. We put off a lot of spending last year so that there was no increase in the millage last year. It was the right thing to do, but all those, all those projects didn't go away. Um, and so each year it gets harder and harder to put things off. Um, it was mentioned, uh, Tisdor, and I'm going to talk about it, you know, um, so, so I don't know if you all know, but this is, this is the last year I'm going to be up here. I, I decided uh, this year not to run again for my seat, so I'm, I'm vacating it. And um, we have two qualified gentlemen in the front row here that are, uh, are going to be uh, the choice for, to take this seat um, going forward. Um, but, but one of the things that's always been um, important to me, because I believe it's, it's critical to this town, is the Tisdor project and the name a lot of a lot of folks I'll talk to folks and a lot of times I'll talk to folks and the name doesn't really describe what it is and I you know it's, it's like my project and I can't remember what the heck Tisdor stands for most of the time so so but what it is is um, basically the repaving of your roads um, we have a huge liability in this town and I'm bringing it up because this is probably the last time I'm going to be able to talk to you about it but we have a huge liability in this town, massive, and that's the roads in our town. They deteriorate every day. Every year, they're worse and worse. And, and Michael left, but, uh, you know, he makes, he makes great points, you know. The, the, the roads are deteriorating rapidly. The good news for him, uh, sorry you left with this, but his road is next on Tisdor, and it's going to get repaved. And then it's going to be a beautiful road and um, it's going to be a massive difference. But we have to fund this project every year. Uh, frankly, the way it is now, you know, it was a 20-year project. We kept the funds the same, and then it became a 25-year project. Well, roads don't last 25 years. I'm just here to tell you, it, uh, they don't. And, uh, and so what we're, what we're creating is a liability that, okay, we're not going to pay for it, you know, as much as we should this year, but someday we're going to have to. And it just gets more and more expensive. So it's important, um, you know, not, not for me because, you know, it was my program, um, not, not for continuity, but because we need to do it because it's a huge liability for our town. You can, it's the old adage, you can, pay, you can pay a little now or you can pay a heck of a lot more later. So um, we actually uh, cut down the Tisdor amount this year because of uh, some efficiencies that uh, John spoke of and also not putting as much money aside because uh, I think it's, it's pretty much fully funded. And um, so we, we did cut back on that. We've tried to cut back on everything that we could possibly cut back. 
Um, but that's critical for us, and, and I certainly would not recommend uh, um, not doing that. It's only going to get more expensive. It's going it's, it's, uh, it, it, to would just would create a huge, a huge liability in the future. A um, couple other points I wanted to make, and that is um, the, the property out west. Valid question, Jim, valid question. Now, how, much, how much interest are we paying on that? on that property out west. You know, why aren't we selling that property out west? Why did we buy that in, out west? Um, I think it's important for you all to know why we bought that out west. Um, because it is a huge expense for the town. It was $8 million. That's huge for our town. We have a $13 million annual budget. So $8 million is, is a big number to us. So um, that property is our future. That property is what is going to allow us, as Bob said, those of us, and I'm, I'm in the same group he is, I'm just a few years from retirement getting on that fixed income. That property is what's going to allow me to uh, stay out here till I'm a, a ripe old age because that property um, is going to be a huge um, source of revenue for our town in the future. And that's why we bought it. Pembroke Pines was going to buy it. Believe me when I tell you, they were not going to put anything on there that was going to give us a penny of revenue. Not a penny. So that's why we bought it, to protect our future. And now we're actively working to find a, uh, um, an entity that can occupy that and can provide huge revenue for our town to stabilize where we are going forward. We can have our own increases as years go on, as opposed to it just sitting on the expense side, we can have it so where we are the landlord or the, the owner and, and we, can, we can benefit from those increases. So that's why we bought it and that's why we need to hang on to it to its uh, rightful conclusion, which is going to um, really provide for the future and the viability of our town for, uh, for decades to come. Um, so, and then the last, the last point I want to make is that I, I do believe that um, uh, this town was built on agriculture and nurseries. They were here before we got here. And, and I completely respect that and I completely understand that those folks are our pioneers. They are, are the folks that, that settled this town, literally settled this town um, before most of us got here. Um, so I respect them and I, I, I do not want to in any way hurt them. With that being said, we have a lot of folks that are trying to set up agricultural type entities in our town that are trying to take advantage of the tax laws. And as Dee pointed out, it's huge for our town. We are losing out on an incredible amount of revenue because of that. And I don't believe it's viable. And I don't believe it's right. And I don't believe that we should allow it to happen. And um, I know uh, our, our attorney is working on, um, we, we were bringing forth an ordinance. Frankly, it, it wasn't fully baked. It was the right idea. It was the right heart behind it. But um, it, was not, it was not ready for prime time yet. Um, I know Keith is working on another one, and, um, and I believe that it is, it is very close to prime time. So I think that's going to be coming up in the next uh, meeting or two, and I think that's going to have a huge impact on future years to being able to um, generate more revenue from folks that really should be paying revenue and are not. Um, and so, uh, um, and it also protects those original pioneers, those original folks that uh, have large pieces of property and, and do agricultural work. So, so we're trying to address it. Uh, this is a very difficult year. We're still going to look for more ways to save money to cut this so that it's not what you're seeing here. But, um, uh, you know, there's not a lot of options, but we're working on it. Believe me when I tell you we're working on it. Thank you. Gary, go ahead. Just want to make a few points um, regarding the budget and the, the whole process. Um, I'm not an advocate of stalling or delaying TISDOR. 
Uh, we did that one year where we did it back to back to expand a program, uh, something like that I would entertain. But um, this year, uh, 188th, and it's uh, Evron's, it, the side streets are slated. It's uh, out west turn to do that, and I think we need to do it. That uh, street badly needs it, uh, and, and I don't advocate uh, uh, delaying it or removing it or anything like that. So I just want to make that clear. I'm very much in support of the, of the Tisdor program, as you all know. And most of you have known me and seen me up here uh, throughout the last uh, eight years, have known that I am very conservative and I chip away at a lot of programs and a lot of uh, puzzles and, and try to get the nickels and dimes and, and make it all work. And um, one of the things that and, and this is just an observation um, at this point, but since I've been on the, the council, um, we've run a, a tremendous amount of budget surpluses every year, uh, several hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's getting tighter now due to really astute management by Marty and Andy. And uh, it, it's, the budget surpluses are not there. There's not a lot of fat in this. There's, in fact, I don't think there's any fat in this. We've already cut this. And the point I want to make is several years ago, eight, nine, ten years ago, it was easy to make these cuts because we could find the money. We could actually use a surplus from a year before because things were not being done in a timely manner. Well, that's not happening now. So everybody needs to understand that. We, don't, we can't rely on a uh, quarter million dollars that's going to pop out from next year that we didn't spend and things of that nature. So I just want to make that point that our, our management is – is making wise decisions and we're only funding projects that we really really feel we need to fund and if we can find more ways to get more nickels and dimes we're going to do it so I just want to make sure everybody understands that and that's all I have mayor Freddie go ahead <laughs> yeah you know uh, I guess I'm one of the I guess Mary Gay's here probably me and Mary Gay's probably the oldest residents around here and we've seen a lot of changes things that happened and it's coming on and it's it's a very hard thing to do because you know i moved out here i was very fortunate was able to buy 10 acres and i love it but it's awful it would be very expensive if i lost my ag exemption i would have to sell off my property or do something you know so what what we need to do is somehow come up with some kind of a rule or something we can do to protect those interests and still get the other people that are moving here and taking advantage of that. Right. Those are the things we need to do is figure out how we can pass laws or do things to protect what we have and stop some of these other people coming in here and making a living over those things. I agree. Okay, so... Uh I think Steve said a lot of the stuff and explained it uh, related to that other property that we purchased for eight million and whatnot. So we're wa working on a variety of different things. We have all been extreme good stewards of the town's budget in the past and will be moving forward. But uh, where we can kick the can down the road and wait to get the money or you hit the money, we do that. Uh, to keep the millage down. So I would tell you in whatever increase that we're needing to make or do ultimately what the final number is, I would tell you that in moving forward the plan would be that once we're able to go to secure uh, additional revenue for the town that the intent would be to bring the millage back down. And I want you to know because the record sheet I gave you we have reduced the uh, millage in the past. We have, uh, we have raised it and we have brought it back down. So I don't want you all to think, because we're just telling you that up here, that that's not the case. But in, uh, let's see, in 2010, 11, 12, 13, and 14, we kept the millage and didn't raise it at 3.9404. So it stayed that way for, uh, like I said, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, and 14. Um, 
and it went up a little from there. But, but we dropped it back down in the past. So I want you all to realize that as stewards of your money and meeting the budget and the obligations we have, the, clearly it affects all of us at the same time it affects you. And we shave, trim, cut, reduce, whatever we need to, to just more or less get by. We run an extremely tight ship. Um, so I want you to know that in whatever increases we do uh, vote on up here, that the intent is moving ahead is to not keep raising it. The intent and our goal is to get in a position where we have additional revenue so we can bring it back down to a reasonable rate. So I want you all knowing that, and we greatly appreciate you coming out, getting involved. Uh, if you all, as, as they said, want to come out, Town Hall has it at the front desk. It'll be online tomorrow. Is that right, Marty? Is there, is the book's already online. Okay, so this book's already online. So feel free to look it over. If you all have questions, uh, recommendations, suggestions, most of you have my cell phone number. If you don't, I'll gladly give it to you. Um, it's on my town business card, my cell, and my home phone number. But if you all think you have, uh, we can explain just about anything you bring up or come up with related to this stuff. So, and we can tell you, you know, some of the stuff we've already kicked down the road and we've got to a point that we can't kick it any farther. And we're at that point that we have to meet that obligation. We may have a grant for a bunch of money and we may have a $50,000 match we have to meet or a $100,000 match we have to meet. And it was due from two years ago, but we kicked it down the road to this point to where we have to pay it. You got something you want to add? Yeah, th yeah thank you. Go ahead. I just want to summarize where we are uh -huh. and put it in perspective for, for the members of the public. Are here. Go ahead. Back in July, you all set a maximum millage rate which is the rate that we carried forward into the public workshop uh, last last month. The millage rate that you approved at that point was 4.9890. Following the workshop, we were able to reduce that a little bit. The millage rate that we're asking you to approve tonight, which is not final, is subject to a second vote at the end of the month, but what we're asking you to approve tonight is 4.9509. So it has been, re it has been reduced a little bit, there are two components to, uh, to consider this evening. The first is the millage rate, which is what you're discussing now. Once this is done, we move on to the budget. As part of the budget discussion, I can tell you that we've identified some other areas as well that we, can sh that we will share with you that could, council could consider for, for additional reduction. But the millage rate vote has to come first with a second vote at the end of September. And, and then we can discuss the budget and talk about some of those those specifics as well. But just so it's clear, we can reduce it again at the next meeting. Yes, you can. Okay. Just. All right. I'm I'm good. Done where we're at. So, uh, any additional comment, or you want to call the question? Question. Go ahead and call the question. Councilmember Schroeder. Yes. Councilmember Breakers. Yes. Councilmember Jablonski. Yes. Vice Mayor Fiskelli. Yes. Mayor McKay. Yes. Motion passed. All right. Uh, you want to read the next one? Sure. The next item is an ordinance on the budget. It's an ordinance of the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving the budget of the town of Southwest Ranches for fiscal year 2018-2019, commencing October 1st, 2018, and ending September 30th, 2019, providing for a budget basis, providing for expenditure of funds, providing for carryover of funds, providing for notice, providing for severability, providing for conflict, and providing for an effective date. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Um, Marty, you're up. Okay, Mayor, thank you, Council. Uh, we're moving into our final stage, which is our tentative budget, first public hearing. Uh, tonight, uh, the proposed budget for the general fund and we'll cover all the program mods capital projects uh, that it does fund we uh, have anticipated general fund revenues at twelve million nine hundred thousand fifty nine dollars as you could see the largest component up there it looks uh, bluish 
Six million six hundred sixty-seven thousand eight hundred eighty-five is derived from our ad valorem millage. We have special assessment revenue. That is our fire assessment component, and our franchise and utility taxes, mainly state revenue sharing, that make up our largest components of where our revenue comes in. Where our expenditures go, where the funds are classified by function, you will see on the far right the number, which is just happens to be close to the amount of ad valorem we're taking in, 6611719 dollars, which is just over 50% uh, uh, of our entire budget is comprised of public safety, police, and fire. And if you go back, uh, Rich, uh, just in the back side, you will see ad valorem at 6.67, and you see public safety 6 a million six hundred eleven thousand so that is where the large majority of our ad valorem taxes go uh, the other components uh, comprise our general government our general government transfers which is our capital components uh, that will go into uh, community development our parks and, and rec smaller components and then finally our community services at two hundred $63,523. Now, in our general budget assumptions, uh, we've provided in this large, uh, believe it or not, 174-page book. It's a summary docu document. Uh, the objective is keeping our rates as low as possible while meeting our costs. No additional borrowing, uh, conservative projections of our revenue and expenses, and the main goal is maintaining our service levels while addressing our council policies as well as priorities. Our program mods funded in total, there's uh, eight. Uh, there's information technology replacement program, our GIS technician services, and highlighted in red, you will see uh, a large majority of these have the have no millage impact. Uh, they're utilizing restricted funds, uh, fund balance um, with that does not have uh, millage impact. The code enforcement level of service increase, and again, uh, that was an addition uh, based on our workshop uh, increased level of service for code. Our volunteer department. Fire department, safety equipment. Now, all these below have no millage impact, but do have fire assessment impact. Our volunteer fire apparatus replacement program, uh, 25,000. Our communication equipment replacement upgrade. These are all Broward County mandates uh, that we have to meet, as well as everyone in the county has, meet, has to meet these mandates. Uh, $40,192. A SCBA a bottle replacement, small amount, $3,045. Uh, moving to the next page, we have bunker gear replacement program. These are all fire department, health, life, and safety related. $2,808, which has no millage impact, but does have a fire assessment impact. Uh, and then finally, our volunteer fire department increase in shift personnel going from two to one to three uh, staff uh, per cycle. And uh, that is $42,942. It has no millage impact again, but does have a fire assessment impact. Coincidentally, we also have eight capital improvement projects funded. Fire wells replacements and installation. Uh, again, in red, we have them all highlighted uh, if they have millage or fire assessment impact. Uh, the public safety fire rescue modular complex improvements, uh, that issue came up uh, during the, the discussion on our fire assessment. Uh, that has no millage or fire assessment impact because we have a restricted fund balance available to fund these contractual mandates. Uh, with our Davy Fire, which is also being resided with uh, volunteer fires. Uh, our fire sta station, a learning system, 
uh, the progress on Frontier Trails Conservation Area. That's a parks and pros um, major emphasis by the <laughs> advisory boards. Our town hall complex safety, drainage, and mitigation improvements, hardening of our town hall, uh, no millage impact uh, with this capital improvement. Then finally, we're moving into our transportation projects, which comprise our TIS door, our drainage improvements, our pavement stripings and markers. And the reminder is the TIS door uh, does require funding separate from the regular operating millage. And that's all I have, and turn it back to council. Thank you. Okay, public comment on this matter. When I was up here before, I was the only one in the audience that mentioned Tisdor. Three of you then replied on Tisdor. I'm talking about the operating millage, not the Tisdor millage. I didn't say anything about it. Yet three of you went off on it. No one else in the audience did. Somebody else did. Anyway, what I have to say is this, and I shall reiterate it. Based on what you said previously in the last 25 minutes, and your vote just concluded, you didn't hear a word anyone out here said. The millage rate should remain identical as it is this last operating year. Live with it. Have the administration come back with a complete budget at that millage rate and then see what we're going to look at and then take each project or each department individually. And I don't care if it takes 12 hours of us sitting up here and go through it and go through each department they need to have this, and this is a good thing. We need to add this back in. Have the administration and Marty build a budget that is exactly to the millage rate that we have before with the increased revenue indicated by the property appraiser's office and taxing authority of what the additional funds that we're going to receive this year because of the properties have increased in value. At that point, then add in one item at a time. And let's keep it low instead of trying to take off hundreds of a point that you from your budget workshop to here that you have taken off. And we should be very grateful that we have taken off a couple of hundreds of a point of millage instead of tenths of a point of millage. Thank you. John Eastman, 188th Avenue. Uh, line by line, there's cuts. You can do them. And I <clears throat> agree with what he said. We need a flat budget as far as the mill rate goes. Uh, there's still things in there that can be cut that we're not going to miss. The parking lot out here at the town hall, that can go a couple more years. We don't need to do that this year. We have pumps flooding Griffin Road every night. That pump contract needs to end. We need to shut that drainage system off, that sprinkler system. Um, we overspent this year on drainage. Our, our budget's way over because we got a match from South Broward. We've done a, a tremendous amount of work there on dikes. Maybe next year we can cut back a little bit and uh, defer some of the smaller projects. They can wait. South Broward has lowered our control. We're not flooding anymore. We have some local issues getting the water to the secondary, we know where they are. We know where every hot spot is, and we're, we're slowly nibbling at them. If some of those projects get pushed back a year or two, that's fine. We live with it. We've, it, we've been like this for 30 years out here, even longer. So there are cuts that can be made, and you need to go back and come up with a zero net increase budget. Thank you. Bob Hartman, 5441, 198th Terrace. I agree. I mean, this is the toughest job you guys have, by far. I mean, I know you got to make a lot of decisions through the year, but spending other people's money is a tremendous responsibility. 
I agree with these folks. I mean, start with the zero-based budget. What what did you have last year? What do we really need new? Because this is, you've said it. Some of this is contract. Can't change that. Understood. But what you can change, please address. Thank you. Any additional public comment? I just can't help but notice 40 grand for radios. I tried to give them away. The same guy that fixes the Motorola radio fixes the EF Johnson radio in the same friggin' dealership. And all I heard was all this crap about P25. Guess what happened in Parkland? The radios didn't communicate. That's one of Motorola's problems. But given your radios, you could slam them against the wall and give them back to the guy if they didn't work. But 40 grand is 40 grand. Any additional public comment? Seeing no additional public comment, public comment is closed. Back to the council. I'll go first. Go ahead, Gary. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for their input. It, it, it's kind of interesting to hear the methodology that's being asked by the public when that's exactly what we did. It, we started out several months ago. This is last year's number. What do we need to add to it and why? And that's exactly the approach we took with the administration. And Len, I'll give you a for instance of what what didn't survive. We just repaved Appaloosa, Malaluca. It has no striping. It got cut from this year because it didn't survive the budget process. That was thirty, forty thousand dollars that we took out that we didn't stripe. The new Tisdor project, maybe next year. But I'm just giving you guys an example of our thought process on how we arrived at where we're at today. What was essential? What wasn't essential? The striping is not essential. That was deemed that, and we could save some money there. So we took that out. So that process is exactly how we moved forward with this year's budget. I just want everybody to understand that. Uh, you know, we're not operating in a vacuum up here. Andy, you have something to add? If I may, because it's good timing on what you said. The striping was something that was identified since the last. So the millage rate that you approved tonight doesn't have that. And I do have some other reductions that we've identified. And this is probably a good time to share those with you as you discuss it. But uh, one is obviously the, the pavement striping and markings, which, which takes $29,000 uh, off, off the budget. We've identified the $100,000 that we have budgeted for Front Trails, Frontier Trails Park. We believe we can reduce that further by 25,000 to 75,000. So there's another $25,000 that we've identified in savings. We, I hesitate to say this, but we've trimmed the legal budget by $50,000. Uh, so that's pretty substantial. Uh, we, we can, if the council d deems it appropriate, the pros play, pro playground equipment maintenance services for 18,000, we can put that off. So we've identified an additional 100,000 approximately plus just since the last meetings with you because the budget process for us doesn't stop. We've, Marty and I have continued to meet with many of you over the last, certainly over the last couple of weeks. So we're continuing to identify those. So, so Council Mayor, you're right about the striping. That wasn't reflected in the millage rate that you saw before, but it is, it is, you are correct. It was identified. It is an additional reduction that we've identified to bring forward. Yeah, so I just just in, in closing, I just want to mention that that is the exact methodology that's been suggested by residents uh, that we used. That was our starting point was last year's millage rate and a little bit below because we had some pro, uh, programs that had finished up. And so we were moving forward with that and we, that's how we narrowed it down to these essential programs that we need to do. So I just want to get that on the record so everybody understands that. Thank you. Who wants to go next? Anybody? Steve? I'll go. I, I'm, I'll be quick. I really, I think I said everything that... Um, Previously. Yeah. Um, mostly from the millage side. But I will say this, that uh, 
uh, one of the points that was brought up earlier in the meeting had to do with lobbyists and all that and why we spend that money. And um, that is really some of the best money that, that we spend. That, that money brings in, pays for itself many, many, many times over in funds that we get out of Tallahassee to do uh, large projects. You all have probably seen uh, behind Tom Thumb all the, how everything is all torn up out there and, and uh, what's going on there. That is money that came into us based on our lobbyists that uh, worked in Tallahassee. Um, you all probably have also seen when we get a big storm how Dykes Road becomes a, a canal. And, and these cars, you know, try and make U-turns and then they're, they got their nose stuck in the, in the swale and the road is shut down until somebody hauls them out. Well, this project, which we, you know, was forwarded by our lobbyists, produced $900,000, was it? Uh, Last year, 340000 This past year, 500000 Yeah, so, so close to nine hundred total together. And, and that's going to be huge for our town. We, we, we could not afford to do that, you know, out of our, our normal budget. Um, but through those expenses, um, through paying for those lobbyists, They've done an amazing job for us, and they, they have been able to uh, bring home funds to do projects that otherwise we would not be able to do. And I, I really think it's those kinds of things that um, sometimes don't look good on paper. Like, and, and, I, and I get the comment, you know, why are we spending $40,000 on that? But it's, all, it's, it's, it's been looked at, it's been reviewed, and it's been based on past experience. That this, is, this is really money that for a long-term view on the town is really essential. It's really important, so thanks. Dee? Yeah, I have to agree with Steve. I mean, we've attended Tallahassee and where some municipalities got nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. We got money. We have really good lobbyists. And remember, you get what you pay for. And so if you have people that aren't working that hard for you, it's just not a big deal. So, uh, it's, it's money well spent. You know, nobody wants to have to pay to get something that they think they should have in the first place. But it doesn't work like that. You, you get what you pay for, and like I said, it's uh, money well spent for very good lobbyists. Thank you. Freddie? You good? Okay. Yeah, um, I got to tell you, we uh, make it a point to go to Tallahassee every year for Broward Days. We uh, visit everybody that uh, our senators, congressmen, uh, commissioners, anybody we need related to the town or even borders us or has a piece of us. Um, and we see them on their turf. And I've got to tell you, with the lobbyists and us going up there and paying a visit, if we need to call them and pick up the phone, they know who we are, they know who Southwest Ranches is, and they'll pick up the phone because we've taken the time to go up there and see them on their turf. So. I got to tell you, all, all that little bit of stuff, and that additional work goes a long way. And uh, on many of occasions through the years, we've been able to uh, receive grant money or funding on stuff, things and projects that we've uh, submitted for when other municipalities didn't get anything. So I've got to tell you that uh, has brought us a long way. So when we get an opportunity to get money and we have a match, let's say we have that 500000 they talked about. A hundred thousand dollars. Usually, we have a match of that. Sometimes it's real money. Other times, it can be engineering or different plan stuff that we can submit a value to. So you don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth. Say no, we don't. Want, we won't take it. You know. So if we get the money to help get a, a project or a drainage project completed, I got to tell you, we jump on them every chance we get because we don't have the money. Otherwise, the project would never get done. We'd never have the money to do that larger project. So um, anyhow, I'm good. Anything else, Andy, or are you good? All right. Call the question, if you would, please. Council Member Schroeder? Yes. Council Member Breitbruch? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Vice Mayor Fiskelly? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. All right, so mm -hmm. into that, right? And then we're yeah, we can go to that yeah, do, a, do a motion to adjourn and motion, yeah. to adjourn and then motion to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> Second it. You want to take a five-minute break?
just yeah, let's take a five minute break if we could. I mean, anybody needs to use the restroom or anything, and we'll start the town meeting next. Okay. okay. Yeah, I heard you guys, yeah, I heard, I heard, I, I figured.